messages if I don't speak. Gotcha. So I'm going to post the Discord and get set up. Yeah, three minute delay on that. Yeah. Who's the dead guy? Jimmy. Uh, go on, Jimmy. Fog. Player fog. I think I just fog. got your Discord thing. I just did it. <laughs> so one word, I think I'm. I think I'm doing pretty fog. good listening to your strategy and not putting Player my own stack on the table. <laughs> Is that all of it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I only put about six million on. Maybe, maybe. Oh, well done. Yeah. Added, like, a couple. Oh, you, you won a lot of that. Cool. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. Right. I mean, I was at fifty, yeah. but then this motherfucker had oh. ace queen and I had ace jack. We hit throws, and uh, he outkicked me with the queen. That was a good, good hand. Nice. Nice job. Uh, yeah, give me go and come back. I'll hold your seat. Hold it. We gotta hold it. Fog. Player fog. Ray. All right, guys, hold the seat. Fog. Fog. Sorry if I'm in your way. I'll get out of your way. Gotta hold the seat. Fog. Fog. Player fold. Supply. Player check. Set. Return. Check. Bet. That's a call. The river. Player bet. My head's a six much less so. Fold. <laughs> Oh yeah, you you had my flush draw a little a little overpowered. <laughs> no matter what I was done. <laughs> Unless the six came up. <laughs> nice hand. Nice hand. Can you guys hear me? I hope you can't hear me, because I've got pocket tens. That's a good hand. Alright, here we go. Even so somebody streams I tend to mute myself because I tend to say incriminating things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So whatever you like, Cash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, Shay Mike's married and all that. So, yeah, pocket tens. We've got a limper. Oh, no. We're under the gun. So I'm going to po post the Discord and get set up. Yeah, three minute delay on that. We've got a uh, two down dead guy. Timmy under the table. And we get a guy a call from Joel, who I don't know. So we're going to have a look at his stats before we do anything else. 12 million on the table. 28%. He's already looking like he's going to fold out the corner of my eye. I can see that. Um, but we're just going to check, because if we bet, we get called by any king. Can I see your ring for a second? Probably get rid of any hands that we beat. Chances are I'm ahead here. Um, and he's got nothing at all. So I throw a value bet and try and get caught by a nine or even a three. Yeah. I would guess he probably had a three, a seven, maybe, maybe even a six. Whereas if we bet on the flop, we only get caught by the kings, queens. I sent her an invite, so. She must have had to shut down the whole computer. So, not a big fan of this seat because I can't see the whole table without turning my head, which is unfortunate. Um, so we'll try and move as soon as the end seat becomes available. Uh, four and nine on the big blind. Nothing to see here. No point betting the four. If you bet and you get raised, you're going to have to fold. If no one bets, you can hit a 4 or a 9. Um, and we fold this, because even if you hit a 4 or a 9, you can't guarantee your head. 
if you're drawing that thin and you hit, you want to guarantee you're ahead. Hello, Coopid. We're on a three minute delay here, so we're going to be a bit, or I'm going to be a bit behind anything you pop in the chat. Let me get the chat up in front of me. With the wind. <laughs> right. Small blind with six three. Uh, if three or four people call here, I sometimes call hands this rubbish in the small blind. But to be honest, even if you hit six, unless you hit, unless you flop the straight. You're folding regardless, there's absolutely no point doing anything with that. Come on, hit it. Six, six. Here's the flop. <laughs> so, see the thing is, so six three. Even if we hit the four on the uh, turn for the straight, you still can't be sure you're ahead. Well, I've now got a gut shot straight flush draw, but as it's about as bad as gut shot straight flush draw gets. Because well, no one's got anything. I hope Timmy's not actually dead. Bet. I'm going to call, but I hate it. And this is why playing hands as weak as 6 3 are terrible because you end up bleeding off small amounts of chips. To no avail. If you do hit, you risk losing a big pot. Very, very, very rarely you'll win a big pot. Um, but what tends to happen is people fold 6 3. The flop comes 6 3 3 once in a blue moon. And uh, they start complaining about it. Screw logic staring at me. Why is he staring at me? I'm gonna wave at him. Right, one of the things to bear in mind here though is we are playing incredibly deep. So at the table, we've got several people with 30 million or more, which means that the value of drawing hands goes up and the value of big pairs goes down. Right, Mike's raise. Now, Mike's raising range against me is wide. It's my button. He knows that. He knows I'm probably not going to fold. I can raise. I can call here. Either are absolutely fine. The reason you're raising Jack King suited is because you don't want to be only raising your huge hands. If you only ever raise with aces, kings, queens, ace, king, ace, queen, and maybe jacks, then you're very, very easy to play against. Because when you raise, you've got one of those hands. When you three bet, you've only got one of those hands. Right, Mike's pretty much going to bet any flop. Now, Mike likes to bet small in the flop. 25% is about right. Um, now, a lot of people raise here because they're worried about people hitting the flush. If you raise, people are going to call only with better hands. Whereas if I call Mike's 200,000, um, he can carry on betting all sorts. Now, of course, I've got the flush draw. I've got the top pair of kings. I think raising or calling is fine here. I'm going to call because I think if I raise, he folds too, min too much of his range. He'll fold everything that I beat. And I want him to carry on with ace-8. I want him to carry on with um, queens, jacks, misdraws. Now, obviously, I'm not folding here, and obviously, I'm going to raise as I'm now get the card I need. Throwing a bit of an over bet, making it look like I'm trying to bluff it with the hearts because it's a backdoor flush draw. So he's got a real problem decision with king queen here now, which is one of his likely holdings. He can have aces, he can have ace king. He shouldn't have the ace eye flush. If he has, I'm just losing a lot of money here. It's a real possibility that he's got. He can't have ace king with the king of hearts. He can't have king queen. Any hand I'm losing to is ace jack of hearts. Which is a real possibility. Wow. King Queen's most likely. Player is all in. Ace nine hearts. Nice one, Mike. Yep. Crazy. Nice hand, Mike. Wow. What that is well done. Fucking hard to do. 
I've got the second nut, so I'm not. I'm not both. So really, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to keep myself was... muted. I had to ponder it. Oh my god. Because wow. I know he's actually he's thinking of the hand because he's part. actually reading it out. Yeah. So that was a challenge. I thought it might be Ace Jack of Hearts. I didn't think Ace Nine. You could, you can have the ace. The fact I had the king of hearts made it impossible to fold. I've got, I'm blocking ace king. Of, ace, ace, yeah. If you once you can't have ace king of hearts, ace jacks right out there. But yeah, that's just bad luck. Oh, when the king came up, and I figured maybe flush chase at that point. Maybe he's got the, the king flush, and I'm, I'm I'm banking on it. Yeah, yeah. And so I call it to the end, and then see that last heart. Yeah. Off. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that was that was. That was only a financial decision on that one. Oh, absolutely. To the end. Yeah, because how much did you have? Well, you, you were betting. You, you bet the flop and the turn. Yeah. And I was betting, knowing I had a potential of losing the money, but gaining a lot more. Yeah, yeah, back door. Yeah. Absolutely. Can't do a lot about that. Stuff like that happens. You just have to swallow it. Um, thing is, I don't think he's re-raising that river with much. To be honest, I could flat the river. Um, but then what am I re-raising with? Just the nuts. Um, got the second nuts. Yeah, maybe I can call the river. Um, yeah, one of those things. You backdoor into a flush and someone else backdoors into the nut flush when they've led the flop on the turn. You've just gone lucky. So we are 31 million down. So let's buy some more. Two pair and they're fucking running, running too. What are you going to do? Fold. One card I wanted to not come up was that piece. So, card, I was when you lose a big pot like that, you can spend hours dwelling on it and worrying about it. So, you have a little think about did you do anything wrong? Were you playing well? Hey, Timmy, how you doing? I'm streaming, mate, just in case uh, you start saying fuck or bollocks or something like that. <laughs> they keep my, my uh, shenanigans <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So when I said the F word a second ago, I probably should have That's back a bit. Oh, absolutely. It's disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed in myself. I oh, know. So, yeah. I think, have a little think about whether you did anything wrong and then let it go. Absolutely no point um, dwelling on things. It just makes you play worse. And potentially, I could have re-raised the turn, but I actually want Mike betting with flush draws there. I want him betting with weak hands and draws. So I've got the king. I was actually ahead at that point. Um, if I re-raise, unless I re-raise big, he calls anyway. And if I re-raise big and he folds, I don't really want him folding. I want him calling me. So, circus so like Raising or check calling on the turns, absolutely fine. Um, just bad luck. But a good start. But on the plus side, we are still 185 million up for the week. And I keep getting close to 1.8 billion and then drop in a bit. We'll get there eventually. So, eight viewers. Hello. I just refreshed. I didn't see that. Right, I'm going to keep waffling away to myself. I've got the little chat window up in the game. Um, so, let me know if there's any problems with sound or anything. So, who have we got at the table? We've got me. To my left, we've got Screw Logic, who I haven't played much with. He's not 
bad in terms of his knowledge of the game. Uh, but he can be a bit spewy. We've got Waste Man, who we know very well, who uh, reasonably tight, but he's getting more aggressive lately as he gets more money. We've got Brandon. Nice answer. Uh, don't know why he showed me that, but good to know. Um, we've got Brandon with only one million on the table. So with one, oh, there we go. Two and a half, three, five, six million. I think I've played with Brandon before, but I don't recall. Yep, he's not played at this table much. The Dirty Vega comes in. We've got Cash who plays fairly tight, but also doesn't like folding. Mike, who as we've just seen, can get creative and certainly will against me. We've got Two-Gun Timmy, who doesn't play particularly deep and is well prepared to put his money in. And for some reason, every time I get in a pot with Timmy, I seem to win it, whether I deserve to or not. Let's pop up the Twitch Set. thing and try to move that to somewhere else. Set. There Player we go. Set. Set. And the right, so Set. you'll notice that I pop the um, table view up constantly because you have to know the pot size, otherwise you don't know what size to make Four. your bets. And also the other really critical Four. factor is how deep are the stacks that you're playing against. Um, people Four. constantly tell me that the reason I'm able to win pots is because Four. I've got so much money that I don't care if I lose, which makes no sense whatsoever. Um, the reason you end up with loads of money is because you care very much if you lose. Not that you care if you lose any particular pot, just care if you lose in the long term. So you don't throw money away. Um, very rarely have I ever played bingo. The truth of the matter is that the money on the table is all that counts. And if you're worried about the money that's on the table, you're not doing bankroll management correctly because uh, you're playing deeper than you can afford. So I'm playing with 50 million. Um, who else have we got? We've got Brandon who's playing with 6 million. Somebody lost a hand. So Brandon and I are effectively playing, but he's six million. In fact, I've got another 44 million on the table. It doesn't matter at all. The tricky part is when you end up in a pot against someone who's got six million and someone who's got 50 million, like Waste Man, because then you're playing two different hands at the same time. And you've got to account for both, because your bet sizing should differ depending on the st stack of the person you're playing against, and your own stack, obviously. Keep showing me his hands. Nice hand. Um, so, what's interesting is Screw Logic is clearly um, betting for the stream, which is good because it means he's likely to bluff into us. That's what we want. Um, so, he's going to play a lot of hands. He does anyway. Yeah, so your bet sizing is, should be designed to, if you've got a strong hand, get all the money in the middle by the river. And if your hand's not strong, to keep the um, pot as small as possible. Quite a lot of people do that backwards. They slow play their strong hands, and they bet aggressively with their weak or vulnerable hands because they don't want um, to be called. Does this mean you? Which has the counterintuitive effect of building a pot when you don't want one. So... Ten. I fold up my three. <laughs> yeah. Ace three. Uh, I'm gonna I try and play. He was calling and immediately I threw the check get pulled. I'm gonna try and play properly rather than uh, playing hands that I don't need to for uh, the purposes of streaming because um, it's easy to start playing hands you shouldn't. And again, we're in another one of those situations where everyone limps. So I'm in the small blind. And I'm going to call with 7-jack, even though it's a shocking hand and there's literally no flop that I see that I'm going to be happy with. 
Okay, cool. If I flop a jack and someone bets, I'm still going to fold. Waiting for uh, Ace King against King from hitting that straight. That's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Pre. How are you doing? So, Screw Logic beat me with uh, Ace King, but Ace King versus my Kings in a pot the other day when he turned a straight. He keeps mentioning it, which is uh, good of him. Oh, there's a seat there. All right, let's see. I'm going to grab that seat. So if we get Dell back in, I'm gonna leave and come back on the end. I think that ace flush against the king flush is a perfect streaming hand too. Right, should make it in quickly enough. Like I didn't get in the seat. Damn. I'm going to end up in the same seat once this hands over, but Jordan's there. Fantastic. Right. Chance to get my money back. Or lose a whole load more. Here we go. No. Alright, sorry about that. Right, I've mucked up there. I've lost my seat at the table. Now, I'm sure Jordan would leave if I asked him, but I'd much rather play with Jordan at the table because it means bigger pots. So I'm going to spam the join button until we get back in. And Larissa pinched my seat, but it was fair enough because Brandon pinched hers. So yeah, what was I saying about um, marginal hands on the flop? Really broadly, hands split into four categories. You've got strong made hands, you've got marginal made hands, you've got draws, and you've got garbage. And really, you want to be betting your strong made hands, betting your draws, checking your marginal hands and checking your garbage which means that when you're betting you've either got a draw or you've got a strong hand and that makes you really hard to play against because um, people can't say oh well, he only bets when he's got it and also by checking marginal hands like king jack on a king high flop it protects yourself so that when you do check it doesn't mean you're just weak uh, there's loads of variations to that, and depending who you're playing, you change the way you go about it. So, against somebody who never folds, clearly there's no point betting a draw um, where you're hoping they'll fold it at least some portion of the time. You may as well just let them do the work. Against somebody who folds too often, you can turn a lot more of your marginal hands into strong hands and bet those as well. So, knowing your opponents counts a huge amount.
so I guess the big question is, uh, could I have folded the ace high flush, sorry, the king high flush to Mike? Um, well, if I'm losing, it means he has to have the ace high flush. But like I say, he can't have the king, because I've got that. He can have the queen, but if he's got the queen, it means he hasn't got the king with it. Um, so ace nine, ace ten, ace jack of hearts, the only three hands I'm losing to. Sorry? You just sit sideways. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, so sorry if I can't hear you just... <laughs> but, um, I, I would say be quiet, it might run away, so I don't I don't want it to run away. You know yeah, I mean? on my Rift S, I keep losing my mic, so my choices are either no mic and... or, uh, no hearing on my left side, so I have to... those are my choices. Well, I have on my old Rift or no right mic. side, naturally, because that's I'm deaf in that ear, but... yeah. Fold. Hello. I am I am streaming, Jordan. So uh, please do not swear. And if you could make me look good, that'd be wonderful. Oh, great! Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. I'll yeah. try not to stack you too much. I heard you've been. I just probably already been. Yeah, immediately sat down, started dumped off to Mike. You know, second nuts. Yeah. Here to pick up a stack myself. So yeah. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Are you being a chip bully, Mr. Rogers? Yes, why? You weren't betting until the end. Why were you not betting until the end? I was letting you bet. Now you... That's why. Oh, this is a good table, pretty. More than happy for this. Uh, unfortunately, Jordan's sitting on my left. Um, and position is everything. The advantage is we've got an end seat, so we can see the whole table without moving our head. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hug it out. Hug it no, out. You're okay. not. no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> The I downside is I missed my flush, but I hit it my was dude. it was very smart play, very smart play. Thank but you. you're a very I mean person. It. I know a lot of people say that. I'm, Jordan's on our left, which means he's going to be the aggressor in most polls. I was teasing. <laughs> I, agree. I know. I know. <laughs> Fold. 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 Nope. Something with that flop. Bet. Apparently you did. Fold. He's so easily. Ray. Yeah. King's up. <laughs> Glad I got out of there. <laughs> Brandon raises to one point. He's made a few quid since he sat down. Chop some of that up and. Send it back this way. Always worth looking who's been sitting at the table for how long. So Screw Logic's been here forever. So he's thirty million up. He's unlikely to so wanna drop thirty million. Um also I know he's not got that deeper bankroll, so if he goes all in he's likely to have it. Um and also he's likely to fold if I put pressure on. Uh, Mike's 20 million up and he's built his bankroll back at the moment. Um, have you seen them? He's not going to want to stick the line without the nuts, which admittedly oh, make could have been a clue that he had the A side flush a little while ago, but we'll see. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Oh. Jordan, I uh, took about 150 million off the other day, so he'll be looking to get that back. Certainly won't be uh, passive in hands. There's little switches on the back. If you flip those switches, it won't work anymore. Oh, I see, I see. Are you serious? Right, screw logic is doing the what's going on speech, which means I've got, I've got it, or I think I've got it. When people are. Uh, Oh, what's happening? Who's in the hand? Um, oh, I bet they've got it. Very, very rarely will they be bluffing. So I would expect him to show up here with five, sevens, eights, nines, three, four. Well, not three, four, four, five even. 
Okay, win. I'd like to know what he's getting. He, didn't show, he shows the bluff, so he's got it there. Um, right, so we've got a reasonably good set on and him there. Cash wasn't going to mess around. She's like, I'm getting a shotgun. Heck with those axes. Oh. Yeah, the shotgun, I, I bought the shotgun and the axe, but I chose the shotgun. Yeah. Um, you're quite right, but I'm gonna, now I'm sitting at the end of the table pretty. I'm going to keep my head still um, a lot more because uh, I haven't got to keep looking around. That should make life a bit easier for everyone. I want you to see or we'll look at what I'm looking at. Uh, all right. King 8. A fold. Unless you're going to raise with it. King 8 suited on the button with limpers is a lovely hand to raise with. Um, King 8 off suit to a raise from cash is a fold. <laughs> check. Player check. 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 So Brandon was the initial raiser here. Cash called. Check. Mike check. called. Marisi check. called. Check. Right, so Waste Man's in the big blind, which means he's the most likely to have a seven out of everyone because by the time it got to him, he'll call with any two cards pretty much. Brandon's raised and called there, so he can have a lot of high flush draws. He can have weak tens. He can have eights, nines, and tens. He can also have some gut shots as well, including jack nine. Waste man's betting again, so I'd say the weakest hand he's got is a seven, maybe an ace ten. A lot of draws have hit there, so Waste is unlikely to bet unless he's got a strong hand. And he didn't show. Easy fold. Jordan's distracted at the moment. But once he comes back in, he'll start blazing away, I'm sure. So this was a call on the button. Call from the small blind. Check from the big blind. Which means the button hasn't bet. So it was either missed or got a draw. But don't limp your button if it folds to you, ever. Like, ever, ever. I know I go on about not limping, but there are some occasions when limping's kind of okay. Um, if five other people limp in front of you and you've got a hand that's not quite good enough to raise to try and steal it, and you're good enough to get away if you clip the flop, but limping on the button when it's folded to you is just setting money on fire. So Brandon bet waste called, which means Brandon's likely to have the eight or the nine, and waste yeah. likely to have a draw. Now a lot of draws have hit with the seven, but it doesn't look like any of them are the ones that waste got. So Brandon wins. Brandon's being pretty active, but I think only when he hits. I'm not getting any sense that he's applying pressure when he hasn't got it. some sterling hands here. Temptation when you get a run of bad cards is to play something um, which does two things. One, if you play hands that you shouldn't, you're more likely to lose. You win sometimes but it will be vastly outweighed by the times you lose. And secondly, if you fold a whole bunch of hands in a row, you're building up an image um, even temporarily at the table um, which you can exploit. So if you fold 15 hands in a row and then you play a hand. People are going to overestimate the strength of your hand. Which means that if you do raise with ace queen and you miss the flop, and then you continuation bet on the flop, people are going to be more inclined to believe you because you've been sitting there waiting for a hand. So they're going to be more inclined to put you on aces, kings, queens, jacks. So think of it like um, powering up a special move in a video game. Uh, the more you fold, the more power you've got when you bet. If you're betting every hand, the opposite way around, um, he's desperate to pull off a big bluff. We should really be aware of that in a minute. Um, if you're if you're betting every hand, you're weakening the people's perceptions of your hand range, and they're less likely to fold to you. 
and you can play off that. 6-5 under the gun uh, is a fold. 6-5 on the button can be a raise, ideally suited. Um, and again, importance of position. Cards, cards are a tiny fraction of the equation. So eight viewers now, smashing all internet records. Cash, how did you do last night during that late, late game? Oh, God. I couldn't catch anything. I lost 20 million. Uh, one or 20, sorry. I, it sounds... 20. No, 20. 20. 20, oh. That's, that's small money to you, Cash. Yeah, it's small, but still, a loss. Yeah. Well, you, every river, let's get, the, every let's get river. you even today. Every river it got me. Can you Every get me river. up today? Like more than I am? Yes? <laughs> Alright, Jordan's brought in for 128. We could cover him, but I think if you Can you get me up today more than I am? Yeah, I'll do my best. Cool. Raise it. <laughs> I think I'll play my best with um uh, between oh, thirty and sixty million on the table. <laughs> Um, and also, Jordan's more likely to double us up if we've no, what, what are, got a slightly smaller stack in front of us. Um, what did I just fold? Right, I just folded Ace Four there, um, which I should do to raise. The fact that Ace Four is hit in the middle is absolutely irrelevant. If you're one of those people who, when you fold like Ace Four here, you finally got him. They look good. Um, yeah, it's kind of fun. Horns are the best. Oh, gee, oh you did it. You did a uh, wardrobe change from the last time you were on a table. Well, you guys made fun of what I was wearing. I had to. I well, you just look like a librarian. An evil librarian. I'm sorry. <laughs> an evil librarian. <laughs> I was trying. Trying something new. If you're one of those Thank people you. who yeah. says, oh, I folded the best hand, when you should have folded the best hand, well, stop really like immediately. I mean, you're embarrassing yourself. Um, but also, you're training yourself to be disappointed when you do the, make the right move, and then um, it comes in. 99 times out of 100, Ace 4 oh, is not going to hit there. He's not listening to us. Player fold. Fold. Waste, yeah. I'm, I'm, I am waffling on. I'm doing some quality waffle. You <laughs> <laughs> were right, Winward. I was watching the hand from way back. Uh, I did have the 7. You were right on. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. Thank you. Ace seven or just any old seven? Queen seven. Oh. It was. Nice. Right, there we go. So the hand that I was talking about with uh, Wasteman there is confirmed. He had the seven. It, it was the only thing that really made sense. Uh, maybe ace ten, but ace ten. Yeah, I just didn't quite feel like it. And of course, there's a lot more sevens in his range, and there are tens because the only ten he's playing like that is ace ten. Whereas he'll play a seven, queen seven, king seven, seven eight, exactly like that. I don't know if you guys heard. There's this new player uh, named Money, Money eighty seven, really nice guy. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to play with him over the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. He's from the other game, but they've been trying to recruit him for a while now. He's like one of Whistle's old old friend, but I was just playing with him. Super charismatic guy. Uh, I think Money something eighty seven. Is Zaps money runs Mike with him. Money Mike? Uh, money. Mike? Money was his. Yeah, Mike. Mike Money, I think. Or Mike. I think his name is Michael. Yeah. yeah. Like Mike Money. Um, very charismatic guy. Set. I believe so. Money87 or Money something. They call him Money. Fold. He just bought a quest. Uh, I think yesterday was his first day. But you, you guys will see him a bunch, I'm sure. Really good guy. Good. Yeah, so give him a nice welcome if you see him. Uh, don't scare him off right away at the rest. You let him let him play a few weeks first. All right, we'll we'll, we'll do some good dumping to him, okay? <laughs> okay, perfect. That's good to him. Now, this kind of spot here oh. is one I do like to limp in. So six five. If I miss the flop, I'm not going to put another penny in. Um, Cash has limped, which means she's got a reasonable hand. Children's going to range raise with a really wide range. There's going to be a bunch of callers, and I'm going to get a great price to call here. They're playing deep enough that it doesn't matter if I miss. That plan's now gone out the window because logic's done. Uh, well, screw logic, as screwed logic and min raised. If you min raise when there are this many people in the pot, you are never getting everyone to fold. Best case scenario, Jordan calls. Worst case scenario, Jordan comes back over the top of him, as we're about to see. 
So there's no point in me calling that raise from Screw Logic, because then when Jordan raises, I've effectively donated half a million to the pot. Yeah, Screw Logic may have backed himself into a horrible corner here. I see what you're doing. That's a call. Yeah, I see. It's the fly. Check. Hi. Now, in theory, that favours Jordan's range slightly better than Logic's, but then Logic's three bet does include a lot of aces. Jordan's is a bit wider, but there is no way Jordan's not going to apply pressure on a board that wet. So look at all the hands that are strong there. Ace Jack, Ace Queen, Ace Nine, Nines, Queens, Aces, Jacks, all hands at three bet, four bet, pre flop. Uh, plus 10 King for the straight. Logic should have at least two pair here. Shouldn't have a draw. Jordan has got a bluff if he's missed. So Jordan is now polarised. That means he's either got an incredibly strong hand or absolutely nothing. Either way, he should bet, which he does. And we could see him turn over two random cards here, or we could see him turn over the Stone Cold Nuts. You'll see it on stream logic. Yeah, I don't there. want to stack you. I know you just got all that money. Be there in three minutes. That probably means Jordan's bluffing because he's trying to get him to hold. Where's the camera? The camera's That's, your eyes? Yeah. Yep. And there we go. Yeah, for, for, for the record, I was correct. In three minutes, you'll see it. In yeah, it's on, it's on stream. It's on stream. One of them was a five. So. What happened there was, and I'll, I'll try and talk this through from Jordan's point of view, because that was a brilliant hand. So, Jordan's uh, raised because everyone's limped, exactly as I would, and 5-8, why the hell not? People have limped, so they've shown weakness. Screw Logic's min re-raised. Um, so, uh, oh, Fanta's asking a question there. How am I doing so far? What was your starting stack? My starting stack uh, was... I do it to everyone, man. Yeah, I do it to everyone. I know, I know, I know you do. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm not watching the stream, so I don't know. You gotta tell me. I had a pair by the river. Yeah, I did. No, that's cute. I had an open-ended. No, I had a gut shot straight draw and hit the jack. Okay. Oh, so you can't. You you never. If you called there with a jack, it would have been a mistake. See ya. A very profitable mistake, but a mistake nevertheless. Um, um, yeah, so sorry, yeah, Fanta. Uh, I've lost uh, 30 million so far. We're sitting in a different seat, so it's not showing up on the leaderboard. But I lost it to Mike. I had a king high flush to his ace high flush, both backdoored into it. So, anyway, Logic's now on tilt, 100% on tilt here. Doesn't mean he's not got a good hand. Doesn't stop you having a good hand when you're on tilt. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on there, but. I am strongly suspecting Cash has the got the ace. The speed that went in. Huh. Ash can have a full house there. She can have ace yeah, nine. She can have ace eight. Way. She can have ace six. She can have uh, the straight. Huh. She can have ace king, although I doubt it. He's got ace queen, ace jack, or something, possibly. And that is how you go on tilt. Right, Show so. Love, Cash. Queen's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. <laughs> nice hand, Cash. Um, yeah, so Jordan. So Jordan re-raises the flop. Sorry, Jordan re-raises pre-flop because the min raise, he can't really call that because then he's playing 5-8 out of position. 5-8, and he's shown weakness. So he's put logic to the test straight away. The flop. Exact run out doesn't really matter. The board got scarier and scarier. <laughs> Take a break, bro. Take a break, please. So Jordan keeps applying pressure, hoping he'll fold. When the river comes and it's another scare card, completing a load more draws and completing the flush, Jordan will bet that big whether he's got the stone cold nuts, two pair, or nothing. What he won't bet that much with is hands that have got value, like weak aces, because they become bluff catchers. So instead, he bets his strongest hands and his weakest hands, which is referred to having a polarised range. The problem with that is, with Jordan's massive overbets, oh. you never know where you are unless you're paying really close like attention. So, classic Jordan, and uh, really well played. And it looks like he's spewing off chips there. He really, really isn't. There's a lot of thinking going on there, at least most of the time. So Logic's on um, funky yeah. tilt at the moment, and he's going to lose the hit that eight. If not now, then in the next yeah. hour. 
and when someone's on tilt like that, you can't chase it, you've got to let it come, because they're going to deal with the running. So the risk is you start playing big pots with them and you give them exactly what they want. <laughs> See, look, he's desperate. So we're just going to hope we get a good hand, and if we don't, we're going to keep folding, but we're going to be paying attention to what everyone's doing, because there will be clues. I do watch telly a lot while I'm playing up on the screen, um, but I'm trying to pay attention all the time. I'm watching TV to um, stop myself playing hands that I shouldn't. You, you make a lot of money just by paying attention to what people are doing. Could be him. I think he's aggressive. Then again, I correct So yeah, I'm, uh, my bankroll has taken a massive hit and is down to 1.75 billion at the moment. I've not lost was about th uh, 31 million, I think, to Mike. I do have a light. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Wave. Don't get me wrong, I will be thinking about that hand for a while, but not in a kind of, oh my god, I lost a big pot kind of way, you know. Huh. Is there anything I can learn from it? And what I did learn was, Mike will bet his ace high backdoor flush draws um, on the flop, which is good. Because if he hadn't a bet, I would have bet that flop. And then he would have folded. So credit to Mike for. A bet in there. Oh. No, I think he's putting it up. You know what? I'm just going to take a stogie out of my freaking collection here. I've got. You're trying to get a cigar, uh, Wasteman? Oh, yeah, here. Give, oh, me, thank give you. me a gold one. Give me a gold one. Just check I've got thank all my gear know. on. Gold. Thank you very much. That's a call. I got my vape. That's a call. Thank you very much. No problem. Fold. The fly. Check. Cigar. Check. Thank nope. you. I'll get lit from the. Oh, logic. Give it to Crab. Check. Check. The turn. Cheers, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Temptation there. Hand like 17 in the big blind. Isn't Ring. just cool because, you know, what's 150,000? Not a lot. You do that ten times, that's one and a half million. Every so often you have a ten high flop, someone else has got jacks, queens, aces, kings. You lose a million. And Jordan gets aces. Even a blind squirrel can find a nut. Or two. I had a four. Oh, a little glitch there that happens sometimes. Let's see how my PC is coping with this streaming. First time I've done it for many months. Oh, CPU's on fire, but the. Alright, again, 25,000 will call there. Anything more than that will fold. Joel, get my messages earlier about the disconnects that I had when I first joined the table. Right, well, this guy's definitely not going uh, nice. I got the message about your million sit and go. Um, I, yeah, I, I hit you, I, I refunded you for that, I think. I did already, but when I joined this table tonight, um, Waste was here, he can confirm it. So it was good yeah. logic. I was, I, I get into a pot, I crap, crap out. Get into a pot, crap out. Get into a okay. pot, crap out. Three times in a yeah. row. Yeah, three times in like ten minutes. You played like one hand and then... And that's how we do that. Yeah, um, I played one hand to the end of it, and then after that, three after that, I crapped out all three times so I had money in the pot. Okay, okay, well we can... That's not a problem. Well, I have no idea how much money I lost. Yeah. So, you know. I've got no idea what he could have had there to call the turn. Yeah, I know it was only a tiny pot, but... Uh, pretty very interesting. Guy. Must have been king-queen. But then why is he limping cool. King we'll, Queen? Uh, we'll refund you. Doesn't no make any sense. Seems like you're doing well now, though. I see. Oh, oh, that's just one a, pot against nice uh, Crab. 16 million. Nice. 
I played it oh, for the financial and the Academy aspect of Award. it. And the oh, with the Hollywood too. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. yeah. The there was there was a lot of there was a lot of it there. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was That's... muted too, so it was just a lot okay. of gestures and humming. And right. You know, and... You've taken some notes from Wondersoft. Uh, he's known for uh, <laughs> yeah. doing yeah. some of that. Uh, oh, so he backdoored the Ace I flush. I backdoored the King I flush, and I flopped top pair. So yeah. A lot of. <laughs> That, that was a fact. Like I, a kept cool... betting, yeah, yeah. I kept betting with nothing, hoping to get runner runner on the ace high flush. Hoping yeah. he had the king of hearts in his hand. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It was a cooler. It's good, good for the stream, though. It gets good, enabled me to demonstrate my Zen um, calm. I was swearing, oh, great, I was swearing great. at you, Mike. Watch the stream back. It gets <laughs> all sorts of nasty, nasty words were said. Brandon, you're having technical difficulties. <laughs> I didn't. It was absolutely. You wouldn't be the first person to do no, it. Was, it was. It was good. It was a good hand. It was a good hand to talk about. It gave me loads to talk about. What? We're up to a massive nine viewers now. Thank you very much. I hope this is interesting. I'm, 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 uh, it seems foolish on the stream to say I'm uh, not looking to entertain. I'm looking to try and really... I don't often talk in real detail about thought processes to do with the game, and a couple of people said it would be useful, so I'm, I'm going to go for it. Um, and I'll uh, hopefully we'll get some interesting hands to look at. But I'm, uh, if, if it's uh, a bit dry for periods, well, poker's dry for periods, and you, you, you use those periods to think about how you're going to win the big pots. Um, that said, if it ain't fun, stop playing. 13 viewers, fantastic. Thank you very much, folks. Let's just check the old Discord. I'm trying to keep my head still so that I don't make anyone sick, but I've got a couple of screens in front of me that I look at while I'm playing. Did uh, anyone tri watch uh, the Moneymaker match yesterday against Bingo oh, Bango? Yeah, that was pretty good. Fold. Yes, sir. Now, I'm doing a lot of talking myself Great. that I want you to hear, so apologies to Zeph in advance if she... Hey, Zeph. I have to mute her. No, I'm talking a lot. Hi, Karen. Romeo. Ray. Chad. Jericho. Justin. Hey. Right, so Jordan raises, screw logic re raises, Jordan three bets, Jordan's on the button. Screw logic has already demonstrated that his range is really wide here. There is no way he's folding. How much has he got left? 12 million. Raise call. Right, Jordan would have gone even bigger there if he had a huge pair. So Jordan's range is now capped at mid pairs, ace 10. This is like a weird spot. Penny flush draws. But I will be shoving. That could mean absolutely anything. But it's probably a large draw. Okay, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it was a large draw. Nice hand. Nice hand. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Do not be fooled. Nice hand, bro. Perfect time to have. Perfect time yep. to have pop -up. Good timing, good timing. That was, that was very stressful. Just saying. So, I mean, well played. I mean... <laughs> there was a lot of raising, a lot of history. I just thought you might have been oh. making a stand with like a ace queen. Ace well, yeah, like that. that, that's, yeah. that's what I was trying to go for. This is all true, however. Yeah. Nice, nice I, to know. I, I figured because me kind of on tilt, it was a perfect. It looked like you were tilting, yeah. Mm -hmm. However, for the kill shot and uh, four betting with two five. I was so scared that a two or a five was going to turn up. I'm it's like, never a good idea. Please don't kill me. <laughs> a lot of the times it does, man. Yeah, I know. I know it does. 30% oh, of the sure. time it does. But Jordan's I'm image is what, rich boy. what yeah, enables him to get paid. Last hand again. Oh. Oh, me. Oh. When you, yeah, when you bet that million or whatever. Uh, David um, Kim says, uh, yeah. Mike doesn't lie. Hey, he's a lawyer. Um, yeah. Not that that doesn't mean he doesn't lie, but... Uh, I trust Mike absolutely 100%, and he's been having problems for months with his five. So, uh, yeah. Hello, Altered Combat. I don't know if we've met before, but uh, good to see you. 
Nothing like a free double up with aces, right? Right. Oh, wait, I'm three minutes behind the chat. I apologize. With my jack hand, but what, what did you have? You had five what? I was just on a pure bluff. Uh, eight five of clubs, I think. Yeah. I figured. Check. Wanted me. Oh, oh that yeah. again? I see my five. See my five. That I wanted to call so bad is because your signature saying you want to take you out when you're. What happens when I have a that's... think? Think how scary it's going to be though when I have a hand. Just think about well, that. Yeah, that, that's Eventually it's going to happen. Eventually I'm going to have something. Have a hand, and I'm and like, pay I off. can't because the queen, the ace, like so many things beat me. Mike, when you do that, it. it looks weaker. Like when you do that move right there, it makes your hand look weaker. Set. Just letting you know. See, now this is exactly the kind of dynamic I love at a table. You've got uh, Screw Logic, who is trying to win back what he lost. You've got Jordan, who's looking to get Screw Logic. I am a hunt. That 34 million of Screw Logic is up for grabs. If in the process of trying to get it, we lose another 30 million, so be it. Um, but an opportunity will likely arise. Right, a limp from Mike, big sigh from Mike. Which probably means he's stronger than Sorry, the. Uh, you're you're cutting out a bit. Your mic is cutting out. Oh, I don't know if it's my end. <laughs> yeah, 15 minutes. Damn it. <laughs> Unless someone leaves and come back. That's Zero cool. cool, relatively tight player, I <laughs> think, from memory. Yeah. What if I Plays a lot of hands, but not particularly rounds. bluffy. Because that would. Two minutes. All right, now you got 16 minutes. Oh. Yeah. And a lot of pissed off people because we gotta wait for you. But hey, it's okay. You guys like me, right? Check. You either make it or you don't. <laughs> hey. Right now, Mike's limp calling range contains a lot more sevens, fives, and fours than my raising range. Yeah, so you're just we coming up with aces, man. You gotta wait at least 20 minutes before coming up with that store story. Um, at least wait a little, a couple orbits. I promised my, I promised my girlfriend I would make it. Three fold. In like 20 minutes, so. Just turn the table down a touch so I can talk over them if we need to. Yeah, so Mike, because Mike limp called, he's got a lot more hands that fit that flop than me raising. Now, admittedly, my hand was pretty terrible anyway. Um, yeah, Mike's limp called in range smashes that. We've all been there, man. Probably looking at a three in there somewhere. You don't need to make up this girlfriend and this beautiful pasta and everything. Off, no one's buying that. <laughs> I don't. Uh, you're fine, you're fine. We already learned that you live with your mom and you have a dog. I don't have a dog. Mike, again, likely, likely had a draw there that he was betting. Um, and he bets small, which is nice because it keeps the pot small. So you live with your mom. Well, yeah, I'm moving out next month, man. Just have your mom make it for you. Uh, yeah, it is, but at the same time. So, bust, I'll, I'll, I'll bust whoever I can. Um, no prisoners, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, teaching me a lot of terminology. Yeah, if you, if there's any terms that I'm using, any phrases that I'm using that you don't know what they are, tell me and I'll try, I'll try and explain. But I'm, uh, like I say, I'm not holding back on this one. I'm, uh, I'm going to go for it with the, uh, the explanation of what's going on. Right. Zaf sat down. Now we know a lot about Zaf and how she plays. And although she will bluff occasionally, it is really occasionally. And if you fold to a bluff from Zaf, so be it. Um, Generally speaking, if she bets or calls, she's got it. I got eight outs. Eight outs, I think. Unless I'm dead. Good luck. And there we go. So, Jordan is absolutely firing here. So, there's going to be a big pot at some point. A really big pot. That's almost a fold under the gun with Jordan on my left. A, a passive table, I raised Jack Queen suited under the gun, but with Jordan on my left and Screw Logic there, I don't want to be playing Queen Jack suited out of position to those two. If they get three bet, I don't like calling and I have to fold. So um, I've raised anyway. I'm not going to limp in a million years. Um, but I don't mind folding there either. Right. Now, obviously, I'm raising with a lot of aces, so we're going to bet this flop. There's a few draws out there that they can call with. And bear in mind, we want them calling with the draws. 
because I'm beating the draws. Waste man will call with a lot of aces. He'll call with all these nines there. But there's a lot of turns. Any diamond on the turn, a ten, a king, all good cards for me. So an eight. So now ten gives us the straight. Um, problem is though. Mike's hit a lot of those two pair funny hands. He's even got 7-10 in his range. So we're giving up here, unless a 10 comes on the river. And if a queen or a jack comes, we're going to check call the river. So, again, Mike, yeah. Yep, Mike has slam dunked that somehow. Play six, possibly. The straights, the two pairs. All sorts of fun and games. Wasteman's got an ace, so he's in all sorts of trouble here. He's probably going to have to call. Nope. Probably had a 10. Maybe 10, Jack. Yep, 7 10. Absolute slam dunk, like we say. And then that, now, the reason that Mike can have the 7 10 is because he was in the big blind and he called the initial raise and two calls. So, great odds to call it. Um, and then check call. Bet. Big bet on the river. Nicely done, Mike. Go ask yourself, what's he going to bluff in that spot? What hand that doesn't win is he going to bet the pot on that river out of position? And there aren't many. So he's always got it there. I don't know what cash called with, but probably an ace. So children's raised, waste man's called. I haven't looked at my cards yet. Um, lovely spot to call if I got some. And I haven't. And people get fooled by 3 2 being um, connected. But in the, even the best case scenarios, you're still beating a lot. And you're playing a hand out of position to a pre flop raiser. All right, seven six in the small blind, kind of hand you don't mind completing with, but I don't want to be calling a rage raise. And you pretty much need to flop two pair straight to be interested in going any further. Limp, 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 limp. May as well give the money to Mike at that point. Small raise from Mike. He's going to get a lot of callers. And if you're limping for 50,000 and folding for the extra 100,000 here, just stop limping. Call, call, raise. Jordan's thinking exactly the same thing. Is Mike squeezing on the button? And a squeeze is when people, well, when you come over the top of some initial bets. So he either thinks Mike is weak, trying to draw screw logic into a pot, or um, he's showboating. All of those things are possible at the moment. There's no hand that limp. Bear in mind, nothing screw logic limps with here should call this. He should fold 100% of his hands. So should waste man. Very small percentage of Mike's hands will call here. So, look, wasted money. Look at those chips in the middle. I have a very, very good hand. Then why did you limp cash? <laughs> now, if, if cash had raised, then Mike had re-raised. Jordan's not doing that unless he's got it. By limping, you fail to define your opponent's hand. Yeah, if it was a bit better, I'd call right away, but I don't think it's too much. Fold. Trying to get the is J4 a good hand? Nice. Out, but... Nice. Raised for the memes. Uh, he's trying to lure people into a big pot here, but we're not going to be lured. Thank you. Play at the right time. Very hurt. Nice. Problem is, he's got one live card over, over my, my kicker. Oh, isn't it right? Do you mind sending me that, Zap? 
But then again, there's something on the card. It, it doesn't look right. Well, it was yeah, the J4 so card. You reduce my chances, I reduce yours. Mm. My kicker's seven low. I'm suited, but what are the chances of hitting I that flush suited. on the pop? Yeah, Close up, it might be different if I zoom in on it, but it doesn't look right. Oh, yeah, I'll have to make that play again later tonight and have my camera ready. <laughs> See, the great, the great part oh, about the way Jordan it plays is he effectively steals the initiative all the time. Hey, I'm limping here. I wouldn't normally I'd either raise or fold there, but I know Jordan's going to raise with a very wide, wide range, and I've got the button, which means I'm going to have position in this hand. <laughs> We're playing 50 million deep, so in that context, if I do happen to hit it, I've got a very good chance of uh, winning a big pot. And if I miss, I'm just getting away. So we'll see what happens. I was playing Jack 4 earlier when Cash and I were at the table with him, and he was winning with it. So. And you might think that I'm very inconsistent about whether I limp or um, fold. There are, I read something years ago that said poker is a game where you have to tell where you have to understand why superficially similar situations are actually entirely different. And limping is one of those. The vast majority of the time, it's terrible. Oh, no. oh cash just me? crashed. Oh, I thought that was me. It was super laggy. Fold. Yeah, it was super laggy. Fold. Yeah, we could take a stab at that on the flop, but there's just too many, too many nasty cards out there. Really? There's no draws, no gut shots that we like. If you're going to make a bluff, you want some kind of backdoor way of winning the flop. Betting with gut shots is wonderful if you think you've got a chance of getting some folds. Um, betting with absolutely nothing, back up, uh, very, very rarely. Really fast, right? I remember two weeks ago or three weeks ago, uh, you were super short, right? Yeah, I went down to 27 million again. I was over 100 back down. Right now I'm yeah. over 100 again, but it's just over. Wow. Nice uh, job. No, I'm, no, I'm at 97. 97, okay. Nice job. Player fold. Right, Mike. million crack thing that you you can't get past a while, and then yeah, all of a sudden you shoot past it. Now, Mike's playing a bit more passive because Jordan's raising. Very similar to I am. I'm playing a bit more passive pre flop because. Hundred million, except for the four hundred million, I think it was, or three hundred million. It disguises my range against Jordan a wee bit. And if I raise any three bets me on a matter of position, it's in a horrible spot. Oh no no. I just I figured I'd put it on. I know they're selling a bunch of this stuff uh, over the next few days. Two point two. Yeah. Are you my queen or no? I guess not. <laughs> now that's a great spot. So Jordan on the river doesn't bet the queen because he's only getting called by hands that beat him, and he beats a lot of hands that check to him. No, that's just a rumor. They had they had it in the game, but I think it was too like the properties of it were too uh, messy, so they pulled it. But it was it was once in the game. It was like a beautiful gold chess set. They still have the pieces though. There's like the pond in the game and the rook. I think. Um, let me see if I have it. And again, you, so you want to be betting your best hands and your worst hands, which is a polarized range. Your hands in the middle, often you don't, because you get value from the other person when they bet with nothing, and when you call on the river or when you check it down. So there's no point Jordan betting his queen there. Obviously, you bet the turn because he had the flush draw. Have you seen this? This once the queen hits, just check it yeah. back and oh, see if you win. Um, but again, queen nine with the raise from Jordan there. So he's raising very wide. If I was sitting on the other side of Jordan, I'd be three betting him a lot. But because position is so important, and I want to be the last person to act, I'm kind of having to play a bit passive here, and that's fine. A lot of people talk about their strategy, and they play their strategy regardless of um, who's at the table, how deep they are, the kind of things going on. Um, I thought I saw there was uh, the the castle's the rook, right? The rook. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I, there's a rook as well. Yeah, you can have a, oh, have a solid strategy which you adjust yeah. constantly that's based on whatever's going on at the table. That's cool. That's a call. I know. So if what you're doing isn't working, you have to decide: is it not working because just the cards aren't coming, or is it not working because it's the wrong strategy? No one pulls out the cow enough, I think. This is the guy. 
It's hard to tell. A prop that doesn't get much use or much love. Uh, that should. <laughs> that, that we should. Yeah. Right? When was the last time you saw someone pull the cow out? This, it needs to happen more. I've got, I've got a pair of others on my stream now, Jordan. No, it's, it's not, it's not the others aren't drawing in the viewers. Can you face the cow? Face the cow at the camera. Thank you. But kangaroo is just far more interesting than Good old beef. Okay, but uh, uh, yeah, no, I have to with that. let me switch on. I know what I haven't got switched on. Is um. Oh, here it is. Oh. Yeah. Table info. There we go. Sorry. Open end, I, I mean, I had a uh, that open ender. Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch to the uh, aerial view in a second. Um, see how we go with that. So, King Queen off, easy raise. Uh, Mike's limped pre, but Mike's limping a lot of hands at the moment, so it doesn't really narrow his range much. He could have a big hand, but he's more likely not to. Uh, we've been called by zero call. Thank you. Uh, and that's a lot of aces. So I could have an ace, but I'm not going to bet an ace. Um, so I'll check everything there. This is going to be one of those fun spots. Zero calls, probably checking his aces. But probably betting all of his pairs from twos through to tens. And Dizzle is the most likely to have an ace by a country mile. So even though we've got a nice looking hand, we have to fold. There's obviously no draws out there. Um, And hopefully this has got the ace. Otherwise, that's bonkers. Nope, he has not. How much has this all got back? He's got another six million behind. Oh, he has got the ace. He checked the river. Very smart. He checked the river because if he's got the ace, he knows that zero hasn't, obviously. Um, and you have the king? All right, and you win. That's a call. There we go. And there's eight. So zero's mucked, losing to a whole load there. All right. Thank you for pushing me off my game. So because Zero saw a full house in front of himself there, he was unable to fold. Um, where really, he didn't have much of it. I know about that. You, you played that really well. Player fold. Cupid! Fold. Cupid. Hey, bot. Raise. slam dunk this flop um, we're going to bet it because we're going to get called by any ace we're going to get called by king queen we're going to get called by all the flush draws we're going to get called by pocket sixes obviously no one should have kings or aces although you never know that's about as bad a turn as it can be because we're now losing the jack queen we're losing to pocket tens we're looking to all the flush draws we are still beating a lot of the aces and ace queen and ace jack of spades ace queen yeah ace queen ace jack of spades will also bet uh, and Zero just lost a big pot, so he's kind of on tilt. So if we're folding here, we're saying he's got one of a small number of hands and not the rest. It's one billion to call into what will be a 3.6 billion pot. So the question is, are we winning there one in two and a bit times? And of course we are. Three and a bit times. So we're now not beating anything. 
because a queen's beating us, ace jack is, but ace jack is not beating us. Any spade. So I'll call a million here, million two. And what's he bet? He's bet two million. So if I call that's a seven million pot, I've got to be winning 30% of the time. I just don't think I am. So we'll fold the ace king. It's just not enough hands that he can have at that river that I'm beating. I'm losing to any queen, any set, any flush. I think I'm beating ace jack. But then ace jack probably checks the river rather than betting in case he's losing, so. Razor. Player fold. Player fold. Fold. Player fold. Here's the flop. Player bet. I turn down the quality of my graphics because having the second view on the screen uh, really does affect performance on my machine. There we go, that's probably a bit better. Player fold. Fold. Alright. Fold. Fold. Razor. Fold. Fold. Here's the flop. Alright, Cupid's joined us. Cupid knows what he's doing and he's probably watching. Um, so we're going to talk about him when he plays a hand. One of the things here is I'm down 35 million. Oh. I don't think I've done anything that I would change. So it doesn't matter that I'm down 35 million because I'm playing at the right level for my bankroll. If I was down 35 million and I only had 100 million in the bank, I'd be worried and I wouldn't be playing properly. But if you're playing correctly, you just carry on. Raise. I have to switch back, I'm afraid. Fold. Fold. Sorry about that, my computer Fold. can't handle uh, the double. Um, versions of the screen, so we're going to have to stick with the first person view. Fold. Fold. The flop. Bet. That's a call. The turn. Uh, you should be able to see the uh, flop now, whether I'm in the hand or not. Well, I missed that. Cupid flopped the nut flush as I was doing some stream-based admin. And I'm not quite sure what Screw Logic was thinking, but he lost a big pot there with 6-3, which he shouldn't have been playing in the first place, and is likely now on two again. So we should see another big pot coming up any second. Fold. Fold. Right, Jordan's gone. 
which uh, means hopefully we'll get a few more opportunities to um, play hands a bit more aggressively. And that's okay. Adjusting to um, a strong player on your left and not trying to play past them is part of poker. Sometimes you get a bad seat. You've just got to deal with it. At another time, you'll be on the, the other side of them. Um, but if something's not working, stop doing it. Here we go. Under the gun with sixes, raise. Most people will limp there, but if I raise with sixes, exactly the same as I raise with aces. When I pop a set of sixes, no one knows. And when I've got aces, they don't know that I've got aces because I'm raising a lot wider than that. So everybody calls, and we need to see a six. Well, there's no six, but there is a gut shot out there, so um, we could bet, but then every draw in the world is going to call. Uh, the question is, can we call 250? Well, it's 250 into a 16, a 1.6 million pot. Uh, that gives us about six to one. No, not six to one. Uh, five to one, uh, which is fine, because Mike's doing that with um, a lot of draws. Uh, I've six which is a blocker to the seven draws uh i've also got the six of clubs which gives us some backdoor flushed equity and also is a blocker to the flush draws um oh and it comes too late because now we're beaten by every seven and there's a lot of sevens in all those hands that called that so we'll call a small bet and we'll hope to pair the river and we, again we're getting six to one Strong suspicion. We might see they've got a flush draw or he's got a seven. Um, there's a few two pairs out there, eight, five, eight, four, but uh, for the most part, he's got a flush draw or a seven. So we need a paired ball here. Now, if he's not got the flush, <laughs> so is he either betting the flush or is he betting to protect the seven that's now turned to dog do because he knows I could have the flush? Either way, my set of sixes is looking pretty horrible. I am beating precisely 4-5. Because the 7 got there as well. Oh, yeah, we can fold that. 5-7, yep, there's the 7. Cheers, Mike. Helpful for the purposes of the uh, the watching several. I knew you were doing the stream, so yeah, yeah. if you want to see it. Well, I, f I folded a set of sixes... Um, so, yeah, Fold. it made sense with the Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. I was more worried you were chasing the flush, but then <laughs> when you didn't, I put the 450 just to see if you'd raise me. Yeah, it, exactly what I said. Yeah, exactly what I said. You put that out there to see if I was going to raise, therefore telling you I've got the flush, and I could have bluffed it. But then if you've got the flush, I'm just throwing chips away because you'll play the flush the same way. Perfect. Yeah. Fold. So, again, just because the little lights pop up with Fold. full house, three of a kind, whatever. Doesn't mean you're obliged to call. Um, that's why Zero called, dropped that big pot when he saw the lights show full house. But in reality, all he had was a pair of eights. Player check. Here's the turn. So again, we lo how much money have we lost so far? We lost 31 million before we sat down at this table. And we've lost another four. 35 million. One pot away, and oh look, there's someone with 24 million. Looking to give it away. See if we can get it. I'm gonna once this is done, I'm gonna download this stream and I'll post it on my YouTube channel. Um, there might be some interest. Well, certainly been a few interesting hands, a uh, lot to talk about. Interesting from my point of view, at least. Your mileage may vary. Because I hit my second pair, then you hit your straight. Yeah, the mic wasn't on. 
So if you're one of those people who loses a big pot early in the evening, like I did, and then spends the rest of the evening steaming about it and digging a deeper and deeper hole, that's not the way to get out of the hole. The way to get out of the hole is to think even harder, focus even harder, play even better. The other one. I know I missed you, but it said Captain Ron on it, and I was trying to switch seats over there. Hello. And I still gotta watch his latest video still. I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> I'm streaming at the moment, mate, just in case you were. Oh, he's gone. All right, so, Tizzle limped the button there and then folded to a raise. I don't understand that. What's good enough to limp, but not good enough to call a raise? What, what's the plan? Fold. Fold. Call. That's a call. No Very point well. raising there. It's 25,000 to call. And that is a good flop. Check. We've got a pair, Check. and we've got a gut shot, and we've got a backdoor flush draw. And most importantly, we've got a hand. Uh, which plays well if it hits on the turn. This is kind of the opposite of the hand I had. I mean, Mike's spot when Mike had the 5 7. However, with Mike raising there, he's basically saying I've got two pair or better, or at least Ace 8 or better. Uh, Waste Man has limped again, so his range is very wide, it can include literally anything, all the pairs, all the sets. But this might be why you don't limp. Because now waste men can't Wait, define Mike's end. Doing you a favor. Yeah, Mike's great at bullshit in that spot. I don't think he is, but that's for earlier. Yeah. So Mike flopped the straight. That's why you raise. Now, if you raise, at least you've got some sort of sense where you stand. Mike pro probably pair. couldn't. Yeah. I figured you had something. I wouldn't have called that much. I knew you. Well, that's why I threw or... that. That's why I threw that much in. I just wanted to put an end into it instead of you keep re-raising. Re fold. 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 Fold, 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 fold. Call from Mike. We're gonna... This is a bit loose. But we're on the button. Mike's limping wide. Uh, fold. I can apply pressure here. I haven't been showing a lot of weak hands, so Sig 9's right at the bottom of what I'm gonna raise here. Wasteman's not happy. Second pair, two is irrelevant. There's a lot of draws out there that will call that I'm beating. And of course, we want the draws to call. We don't want the draws to fold. I want a call from 8 9. I want a call from 4 5. I want a call from all the flush draws. So we put Mike in a difficult spot with the bet size there. Because he knows he should probably call with a lot of hands. Although he's doing that thing where he might be uh, Hollywooding me again. I've now got two pair. I'm losing to 8-10, which he can have. I'm losing to the sets. Six sevens a hand he can have, which I'm smashing. So we're going to give him another difficult decision with all these draws. I think he's got a decent hand here. Nope. Ace six. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so yeah, he's ahead on the flop, but we bet and he called. Um... But again, he'll call with all the draws. Thanks, all to the Combat. Your comments just come through about the um, pocket six hands. Yeah, I think people get seduced by the fact they've got a set. If you've got a set of aces on an ace four ten board, Ray. you're golden. A set of twos on a three, four, six, or two, three, four ball. You need to think long and hard about um, two, three, four, six, even. But people just don't like letting go of big hands. You don't want to be a pushover. You want to be playing back a lot. But you, what you do is you look at what are all the possible hand. Not what hand do I think my opponent's got? Am I beat or not? What are all the possible hands my opponent could have? And do I beat enough of them to make calling or raising profitable? And if the answer is no, you fold. And it doesn't matter if you're wrong. People worry about folding a hand where they're, they're ahead. It doesn't matter. If the right... 
the right decision is to fold, you fold. Everybody, what's up, Mike? Fuck him. Yeah. I'm, stre I'm streaming, by the way. I mean, you can swear all you like. I'm fine with that. But I'm I am streaming, just so you know. To my massive audience of, of several. Oh, you're streaming? Yeah. Okay, cool. No, you can swear. I'm fine with that. No problem. I don't like him. That's fine. You, you, you're more than entitled to that view. I'm... Uh, So how many? He thinks he's great, but he's not. Bet. That's good because I don't think I'm great, but I am. So that works out right. <laughs> oh, I know. Please take his money. I don't care. Whoever takes his money, just take his money. Yeah, he's all right. He's a he's a young guy, isn't he? Like, he's betting like nuts. No, no, no. Are you talking about true logic. Yes, he's he's at his he went to the store. He should be back any minute. Call. Do you know him? Logic? No, he just said he was going to the store. He's been playing. Oh, okay. Pretty much all evening. I, I was gonna say. Player bet. He he's on my bad side right now. Uh, one of the things about poker. Well, first of all, that's great information. That, um, if Oculus is in hand with logic. You know what He's I noticed? Everybody's playing. name above their head is really like gray. That's when you fold it. When his is white now. What's yeah. going on? We, yeah. When you fold your you when you fold your name goes gray. Maybe if they have oh. cards or not. Yeah, when you when you fold you go gray, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's new. No. Oh. That's not new? No. Oh, I didn't I never realized that. So, yeah, you make mistakes. When, you, when you're angry with someone, you make mistakes. And there's been a few people in this game who pissed me off over time. Um, and what you want to be playing is in a state with no emotion whatsoever. So your brain can work properly. As soon as you get emotional, your brain stops working properly. Um, again, if you're playing for fun, who cares? Um, and if you don't care whether you win or lose, totally up to you. Absolutely fine. Um, I'd rather be losing and having fun than winning and not enjoying myself, um, certainly for play money. Um, but if you're emotional about how you play, you don't play your best because your brain can't function properly. Um, so you've got to try and keep emotion out of things. Which includes tilt, not avoiding tilt, it includes um, not getting too excited when you win. You see people win 60 million. Get all excited and lose 30 million of it before they uh, realize that they were playing too many hands. Fold. Fold. Right, we've got a quiet little passage at the moment. Anybody know where the button is on this side of the window? Right, so uh, Bird Gang is the uh, artist formerly known as Oculus Reparo. And he is inclined to play aggressively and uh, spew off chips. So we will allow him to do so if he gives us the chance. Alright, we've flopped top pair, but it's vulnerable to absolutely everything. Mike's bet, which means he's either got a draw with 4 or 5, he's got ace 3, he's got a lot of 8s. He's not bet any sets there, interestingly, because they don't need protecting and he wants someone else to bet. This is going to be interesting, this one. I think mm, biggest candidates are ace 4, 4 5, and a lot of 8s. 4 or 5 is now right at the top of the list. 8-7 as well. I've no idea what my friend there's got. So again, we've got top pair, shitty kicker. Mike's probably has 4-5's got there. I think he probably bets 4-5. Yeah. I don't know where I was there. Again, 
free flop. The phrase I had to call Aided. We're not getting many big hands. Um, some days you get big hands, you play lots. Some days you just get to watch. And not losing money with bad hands counts exactly the same amount as winning money with good hands. Another limp. For someone who supposedly doesn't limp, I'm doing a lot of limping this evening. But that said, when I'm playing, I like to um, talk up certain aspects of my game that just aren't true. So I like to talk up the fact that I don't limp so people don't notice when I do sneaky little limps like that. I uh, don't like people to know how much I bet at flops that I miss. There hasn't been a lot of it this evening, but I do. I won't say bluff. Big bluffs, I will do, and I will three barrel, much much like Jordan would on that ball that we talked about earlier. But I'll bet a load of flops that I'm nowhere near. I don't like people to be aware of that because I'll get called more. Um, so uh, while I'm trying to be as honest as I can right now, I talk an absolute stack of bullshit when I'm sitting at the table for misdirection reasons. Right. Cupid's home and dry there. Ten seven of clubs. Daniel Negreanu's favourite hand. Ten seven. So you see, since Jordan left, Mike's become more active because, exactly as I know, um, Jordan was going to raise so many hands. So raising put you in an awkward spot out of position. But now Jordan's gone. Mike is raising a lot more than he was limping. Dizzle's limp calling a lot, limping a lot, playing very, very passive, and from the way he's sitting in his chair, he's very tired, which means that if he suddenly perks up, he's got a good hand. All of these things that I'm saying don't need to be correct. They just need to be correct more often than average to give me a little advantage, and all those little advantages add up. I don't know what that could be. Queen 10. Oh, Mike's got a full house if he raises here. Always pocket threes, pocket queens, pocket tens. Um, pocket threes, pocket queens, pocket tens is about the entirety of Mike's range. Fold. And it's pocket queens. There we go. I said pocket threes, pocket queens, or pocket tens, Mike. <laughs> Probably pocket queens. Thank you. I knew you were saying that on the stream. <laughs> I could feel it, so I had to show it. Thank you. That's yeah. The you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Thank you. Where's your camera? Uh, I'm first person, so through here. Oh, okay. Hello, TV Land. Hello. There's hundreds of them. By hundreds, I mean nine. Nine's not bad. More than I thought we'd get. So thanks for listening. Right, what happened there? So Wasteman called, Mike called. So Wasteman's called him with a lot of aces, but there's a lot of hands he's called him with that aren't aces. See, Mike bets a lot into the preflop raiser. I'm the preflop raiser here, so I should be the aggressor. But Mike betting a lot of his aces because he doesn't want me calling with the flush draw. And again, if I had King Queen there, I might call. I call with any pair. I call with the King of Spades on that flop. Everything else you may as well just fold. Mike's basically saying he's got an ace. Wasteman's saying he's got an ace. Yeah, so Mike's bet the ace. What's Wasteman? He's saying they both had aces, yeah. As anticipated. But Wasteman's backed himself into a corner there by playing ace five off. When he didn't raise me, I figured you had a low kicker. With ace five? Oh, it was raised pre, but it was in the big blind, so you can kind of forgive it. But you see, I folded ace four earlier. That's exactly that spot. So he's called because he got a good price. And that good price has cost him. And it could have cost him a lot more if the flush hadn't yeah. come. So you just fold that pre-flop. And when the ace comes, you think, phew. Anything that didn't hit that board had to be five or less. And the four was there, so I figured you didn't hit it. So there was a chance. All that was was an opportunity for Waste Man to lose chips. There was never going to win a big pot there unless he flops exactly two pair or two fives on the flop. 
Um, now, interestingly, Mike lost a bit of money because if Mike had checked to me, I would have bet that flop, uh, even though I had nothing, because um, an ace high flop with a paired ball is a beautiful one for the pre flop raiser. So, Mike lost a bit of money. Um, he would have probably, if he'd have checked, I would have bet he would have called. He probably would have checked the turn. I might have bet again. He could have won the reasonable pot there when I had absolutely nothing. Um, but Wasteman should have been nowhere near that. Uh, thank you, Alter. Pleasure having you here. Um, catch you later, mate. I was going to say, I'm going to upload this on YouTube. Um, it's a lot of stuff, so um, if anyone does want to watch it back, uh, this is a bit loose as a raise goes, but the table's playing very passive. We've got someone sitting out, so my position's one later. Um, Dizzle's not interested, so that's one less person. Uh, Right, this is a tricky little spot. This I have to bet this because um, if you're going to play six eight and you're not going to bet an eight high flop, what are you doing? Bet. But I'm going to bet relatively small call. to give people a chance to raise that I can get away with. And also, I want people to call with ace three. I want them to call with five six. I want them to call with ace five. I want them to call with pocket sixes, pocket sevens, call. pocket fives, pocket twos. You want lots of hands that you beat to call. If you raise bigger, all you're getting called by is sets of threes, fours, you're getting called by nines, and all sorts of hands. So you want people to call with worse hands. Unfortunately, there's a lot of fours out there now. Um, so we're going to check. Don't mind betting there. If I did bet, I'd bet about 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 oh, okay, this is bet. Uh, one less than one fifth of the pot so i will call that with a bus ticket and a, and a beer mat I'll certainly call that with top pair i mean he could be beating me he probably possibly is he can certainly have ace four um but if he has got ace four and i hit an eight on the river um he's in trouble oh and there we go everyone loves a chop pot yeah, he looked like he had an eight from the get-go. I know. I've infected us. Fold. Call. Call. Uh, Fanta, I live in uh, Essex in the southeast of England, Call. although I work up in the northwest in normal times. I haven't been up there for a couple of months working from home at the moment. One thing you'll notice is um, people talk a lot more when they've got good hands than when they've got bluffs. Because it's easier to talk when you're not lying. I know Turtle said this on the stream a few times, and it's true. People speak more and more clearly and more fluently when they've got a good hand. There are exceptions, but not many. Similarly, when they're bluffing, they tend to stay quiet, which is why very, very rarely do I speak to you in a hand at all. Sometimes I'm just having a good bit of fun and enjoying myself and I'll chat you in hand, but you lose money when you talk. Oh, if you're out in 50 seconds. You gain money when you uh, listen. Fold. Raise. Fold. So Mike's playing well at the moment. Not giving me any opportunities to get my money back. And in fact, the moment I lost it, it was no longer my money. So here we go. Right. So I had nine two of hearts. And a lot of people fold nine two of hearts in the big blind correctly and get angry when the flush draw comes out and then get absolutely ballistic if they hit it on the turn. Once you folded it, let it go. Unless you made a mistake folding it, in which case you should beat yourself up, whether or not it hits the flop. Mike's likely to have an ace here. Have a jack. Have a miss flush draw. Zero should 
have an ace or a jack. If he's got a missed flush draw, then his bet should be bigger than that because he's bet 800,000 into a 2.1 million pot. If you miss your flush draw there, um, you should be betting um, because the jack's scary to the ace. But if you want the you want an ace to fold here, you've got a bet pot at least. So if Mike's got an ace, which is uh, the likely situation, he's probably he's going to call 800,000. We've got some kind of glitch on the table. Oh, it's Screw Logic. Screw Logic's got the uh, red X of death. So, it was Mike who had the draw because I guarantee you he's calling with an ace there for 800,000. Now, Dizzle's been very passive and has been limping a lot, so he's raised. Now, because he only raises when he's got decent hands, and remember he limped my button, that means we can put him on a bigger hand than normal. The kind of flop, the kind of hand that hits that flop. So there's a lot of kings and a lot of queens in Dizzle's range. Aces, ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack. Fortunately, I've got a flush draw. Now, who bet there? Now, Oculus has bet, which gives Dizzle the opportunity to fold hands that were going to bet the flop. The mist. He's called instead of raising. Uh, now we've got a choice here. We can raise, but we're getting perfect odds to call and hit for eighteen percent our flush on the turn. And also our flush, if we do hit, isn't the nuts. So we don't want to start jamming all the money in uh, with a nine higher flush draw, as tempting as it might be. Now two million into that. I would suggest that uh, Oculus's range has shrunk to king jack or better um certainly not many draws out there and we're going to fold because two people are quite happily calling two million on that board so even if our flush hits even though we had odds to hit it all we're going to do is give ourselves the odds to lose to a better flush i think that's king queen or better from oculus i don't think there's any bluffs there you can have pocket threes or king queen that's about it really dizzle's missed his flush draw Oh no, Dizzle's got aces, which was the big ha big hand I said he had pre-flop. I forgot about that. So, uh, the question is, why didn't he re-raise the flop? King-queen or threes? Queen three. Well, not quite right with the king-queen, but he did have two pair on the flop, which is why he bet immediately and led out. Uh, all the money ended up going in anyway. But if he'd have checked, Dizzle would have bet and he could have re-raised him and got the money in a lot earlier. Because there are a lot of hands that don't want to see a turn in the river when you've got a weak two pair. So, although it's fun to put someone on a specific hand, what I was trying to do all the way through that hand with Oculus was put him on a range of hands. By the time he got to the river, he didn't have any draws left. He had to have the nuts. He could only have a set or two pair. I, mean, I thought King Queen, but. Get queen three is the same. There weren't any draws that missed because I don't think he's betting um, uh, the big blind as the as uh, sort of leading into the razor with a draw because why do that? Um, so it limits his hands right down. Now he's left with money. Um, Dizzle, on the other hand, didn't re raise him on the flop when he should have done. Admittedly, he'd have been behind. Um, but there was a chance to find out where he, I don't like saying the phrase, find out where you were, but his aces should have been the best hand at that point. And he would have been King Jack, he would have been King Ten, he would have been uh, Queen Jack, all of which might bet the flop and lead out. People often lead out with weak hands, but um, this all played that. That's the kind of situation where someone complains, I got sucked out on with, I had aces, and my aces cracked by Queen Three. Although the initial flop was unlucky and he raised correctly pre-flop, he didn't do much to stop himself losing his whole stack. So if I was scoring both of them on that hand, I would not score either of them particularly well. Mike's all about this leading, but we know Mike bets exactly that much with a draw. And there's a whole ton of draws out there. You've got Ace Queen, you've got Ten Jack, you've got all the spade draws. Um, Wasteman, however, has 
check raise from the big blind, which means he's got uh, two pair. Well, no, he's got ace king or better. He's got a lot of king queens. I'd say king queen is the weakest hand ace wasteland's got. I've got five to one, six to one here, and I've got second pair. But I think even if I hit my nine on my jack, I can't guarantee that I'm good. And a jack's literally the only card that I'm really happy about, which is two outs, which is no good even at six to one. Wasteman, King Jack. Yep, King Jack. There we go. Called it. Sorry, just to... <laughs> Specifically King Jack. Specifically King Jack. Hey, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, watch that one. Yeah, three, yeah. He's got King Jack. Oh, let's see the King Jack. You've been playing with me too much, <laughs> oh dear! Yeah. I'm looking for your stream. Where is it on Twitch only, or? Yeah, it's on 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 Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's in general. Scroll up a bit. There's a there's a link in general. Yeah. In general. Yeah. That's a call. Hi, Diva. Is this the I'm going to be doing math stream? Certainly is. Yes. The, the maths I'm doing at the moment is. With some negative examples for you to oh, I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing that myself. I'm about 40 million down, so I'm, uh, so Diva Esquire joins us. You like playing with Diva? Cracking players. I think she's been playing a huge for a particularly long while. But she's absolutely no mug, and is very capable of bluffing. She uh, she plays like the, the money doesn't mean anything, which is exactly the way to play. Nice hand from Cupid. I missed the preflop action there, so we don't know if he three bet or he's kings or not. The fact that there was three million in the pot suggests that he did. So if I was scoring both of them on that hand, I would not score either of them. Oh. Well. Mike's all about this oh, leading, but we know we Mike bets exactly that much for That's the draw. The and there's a whole ton of draws out there. You've got Ace Queen, oh. you've got Ten Jack, you've got all the, the spade ball. draws. Um, Wasteman, however, has checked raise from the big blind, which means he's got uh, two pair. Well, no, he's got Ace King or better. He's got a lot of King Queens. I'd say King Queen is the weakest hand Player ace wasteman's got. I've got five to one, six to one here, and I've got second pair. But I think even if I hit my nine on my jack, I can't Bold. guarantee that I'm good. And a jack's literally the only card that I'm really happy about, which is two outs, which is no good even at six to one. Wasteman, King Jack. Bold. The turn. Yep, King Jack. There we go. Oh, thanks. Called it. Sorry, just to oh, no, that's terrible. Specifically. <laughs> Cupid's on fire. Sorry, that pause there was me watching uh, Wasteman hit the King Jack uh, back on the stream. Uh, vanity watching your own stream three minutes later is probably the uh, most cardinal sin, so I apologise for that. Now, sure this hand here, don't play it. Oh, if you want to play it for fun, play it. It is literally one of the worst hands in poker. Oh, oh, oh the fun mask. Excellent. We're not going to buy that now because I'll get confused with the store, but... Um, Fold. Save it. Save myself money immediately. Now, right, okay, let's pretend I've got Jack 4 here. So I've got Jack 4. I can't bet it because I'm getting called by worse hands. Diva bets, 200,000. Am I really folding 200,000 with top pair? No, of course not. Dizzle's called. He's thinking about it, but he's going to call. Dizzle calls. 
I've now got to call 200,000 into 900,000. Oh, I'm definitely called in. So I've still got top pair, so I check. I can't bet that because I'm getting raised by anything or called by anything that beats me. And Diva bets. Uh, she checks. That was a good bit of Hollywood. I think she, uh, she can have A6 maybe. Maybe I'm winning with A6. But I'm losing to so many hands with Jack 4 there. Uh, I think it might actually be winning. Yeah, it was. Um, yep, so Jack 4 was winning there. Um, but so often it's not. And also Dizzle should have 3 but ace queen preflop. Because, like I say, there's a lot of times you can complete the small blind from for pennies, but with 8-4, you'd literally have to pluck the cards out of the deck yourself to be happy with the flop. And even if you did hit, you're not getting paid. Pink on you now, so it's not, it's not gendered. Thank God. Paul. I wonder if those pink cards... Paul. That's a call. You're saying I should probably wear mine, too, because I don't... Bold. Yeah, let's all wear them. Let's all buy the mask. Let's buy the mask. It changes like with what happens in the hand, like. Oh, that's. Oh, that's really cool. Alright, I'm gonna have to buy it. Set. Yep, that's what someone who's lost 30 odd million looks like. I'm not bitter, really. <laughs> I think. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm I think, on. Fanta, I was in the big no, blind with the Jack Nine hand, and I think I had some reasonable. Again, we're playing so. If you're playing with a table that you're only a hundred big blinds, absolutely, you fold there. We're playing so crazy deep, like um. thing about not raising before the flop, you know, with my age. I just hate being the leader of the freaking betting, you know, because I get you get caught up in. in yeah. Bold. But yeah, you see me right. stop betting last hand? Bold. <laughs> After I was Player a free bold. flop aggressor. That's the one, yeah. number one thing I need to learn. Yeah, bold. you know, it's like... Yep. It's good. To, um, I don't know who's watching this, who's playing, and I'm trying to oh. pretend that no one is watching is playing, otherwise I'll start double thinking myself. So again, apologies to anyone who's watching who I'm talking about. Um, but I'm sort of trying to do a stream of consciousness of what's uh, going through my head. Um, that doesn't mean I'm right either. For all I know about poker, I realise there's a whole load more that I don't know. So, uh, yeah, happy to be corrected on stuff. Uh, yeah, talking about... Oh, look, Wasteman's crying now. That's terrible. They're, both, they're all crying. They're all crying. Do I? I look angry because I didn't... Yeah, Jack Nine, I think you can... When, you, when you're this deep, so 100 big blinds at this level is 2 million... Uh, 500,000. So we are playing uh, 2,000 big blinds deep. Well, not quite that, about uh, 1,600 big blinds deep. Certainly against Wasteman, I am, and Mike. That means you can play a hands that you wouldn't pre flop because if you do hit the nuts, and I mean the nuts, you stand to win 50 million. If you only stood to win 2.5 million, you wouldn't have the value. The flip side of that is you have to be able to get away from marginal situations like that Jack 9. Um, where I hit the uh, nine, um, because you know you're not good. Uh, imagine if I hit the jack on the river and waste man's got the king jack, I lose a bigger pop. Not too big, but a bigger pop. So you can play marginal hands when you're deep stacked, providing you can get away post-flop. Um, and you've seen me fold the set here. You've, <laughs> you've seen me stack off with the second nuts. I've folded a few, re I folded a few reasonably strong hands. It's a creepy 
aggression of a man. <laughs> no, look, it was grinning. Did you see that? It was like a creepy oh, orange I should, grin. La oh. Lando, I should say I'm streaming, mate, just in case. Bollocks. Sure, sure, no problem. You, you, can, you can say fucking bollocks, I'm quite happy with that, there's no problem. I'm just gonna, you know. <laughs> Uh, one thing I haven't spoken about is preflop bet sizing. Um, I'd bet between 200 and 275 preflop if there's no raise. Usually slightly larger in early position because I want fewer callers and slightly smaller in late position. Um, I will add. Uh, I will add another 50,000 for every limper. And if there's more than one limper, I'll um. Add a oh, little wait. bit more. Oh, he's uh, uh, sorry, more than a couple oh, of limpers. I'll add a little bit more. You got a mad face. I'm not even in the hand. So, the formula is for me really uh, four to five times the big blind plus one big blind for every limper. Plus, if there's more than two or three limpers, add a little bit more. That's an interesting one. I sometimes. One position later, one position nearer the button, I'll raise there to attack the limpers. But with people after me, there's too many people who can raise. Um, and then I'm out of position with King-9. So I'm not going to limp because, again, you've got potential to get the second nut flush, which is a great way to lose 50 million. Everything I was saying about deep stack poker applies in reverse when you've got the second best hand. Um, so even two pairs not great with King-9. So fold it. On the button, raise it. But whatever you do, don't limp with it. And it's a king, hands like King Nine suited are great raising hands, even great three betting hands, because they protect your aces and your kings and your jacks and all the other strong hands. And they're easy to get away from when you miss. They're easy to get away from when someone four bets you preflop. I haven't had a lot of three betting opportunities, it must be said, but in part that's because this table is fairly passive. There isn't a lot of preflop raising. Well, they say not since Jordan left. Uh, I've lost track of this hand. The raise on the river usually means the nuts. Very rarely doesn't. And if this goes all in, it should be at least a four. Oh. It's not. That was a bit of Hollywood. I've not played much with Lando, so we're going to try and work him out from his stats. What have we got? Joined this year in February. 35% of hands won. Means either he's played a lot of short-handed and spin and goes, or he plays too many hands. Largest pot, 23 million. Um, 40, he's played a lot of hands since February. So, um, 4 million on the table. I've seen his name on the leaderboard in a few places, so uh, initial assessment would be probably plays a few too many hands, and that's about all we can tell so far. Ace nine under the gun, fold. Ace nine off. Ace nine suited, sometimes raise. Ace nine off, fold. Because you're getting raised by all the bigger aces, and that's a great way to lose money. So Wasteman's four times uh, Diva's limp, fair enough, late position, should have quite wide range. Dizzle calls, Mike calls, we know Mike's calling wide, Diva's limp called, she's now out of position to Wasteman. Wasteman's range contains a lot of jacks and queens, there's not a lot of twos for anyone. So the only draws he's worried about are flush draws, king 10, ace queen shouldn't be there, and 10, 9. But he's betting his aces, his kings, his queens, his jacks, his ace, king, clubs, flush draws. His pocket twos, which hopefully he raised with. I don't think he raises pocket twos pre flop. Um, so he bets he gets called by Rizzle. Now Rizzle's got about a billion draws out there and a lot of weak queens. He's also got two pair jacks and queens. 275 is a terribly small bet into that. But you're going to bet that on the turn. Generally speaking, 30 to 40 to 50% on the flop, depending on the strength, the, um, how wet the flop is. 
80% return. Waste must have had a medium to low pocket Who's pair there. Who's grinning? Who's mad? Um, because any big cards you can call about that small. Any, any, see, Wiseman's calling that bet with every single draw. He's not folding a single draw there, um, which means he only folded his small pairs, which means Dizzle lost out on value. Um, because if Wiseman had had a draw, he would have called a bigger bet. And if Wiseman had had a draw, he's got the price to call the smaller bet. So you have to put bigger on the turn to make the draws call and give you more money when they miss. Um, and yeah. instead, yeah, lost my train of thought there. All right, too small a bet. Again, 800,000 into 1.8 million pot. You need 5 to 1 odds to call there. On the turn, bet bigger. Because it sets up this shove a lot better. Now, I'm fairly sure I can... There's a lot of sets on that flop. There's... don't think he can have uh, Jack King, unless he's got Jack King of Hearts. Uh, he can have a lot of sets. He can have a set of 7, set 2, set 7, let's say. Um, King Jack, don't you? <laughs> no, I was going to you on the nut straight. <laughs> yeah, I think you can raise King King Nine suited Fanta, um, but I think the problem is in that position you, you're going to play out of position against a, a re-raise too often or a call on the button. Absolutely, raise King Nine suited, and like I say, it's a good hand to balance your uh, your three bets with or your bigger hands. No, absolutely, Fanta. You ask whatever questions you want to ask. Um, I love talking about poker. And I do not pretend to know everything by any stretch. Right, this is the same spot we had earlier. So that's bet here. Now, Diva should fold a huge chunk of her range. She's going to call with any eight, obviously. She's going to call with any pair. She's going to call with a few aces. But all the aces that call will fold on the turn if I bet again. I've got the 7 and the 9, which are great blockers for the 8s, because 8, 9, uh, nine seven. Now, <laughs> now, bizarrely, I check, because I want the aces to bluff. Now, any pair bigger than an 8 was betting on the turn, so she's not got 9s, 10s, jacks, queens, kings, aces. She can have a lot of queens, though, but if I bet, check, she should bet an ace. Set of 7s? Which, what was it? What sets? He's very good at figuring out hands. It was a set of sevens. Um, I can't remember. Fold. Okay, so he, w I didn't have, I couldn't beat the queen. I had pocket nines. Oh, right, cool. Pocket nines. pocket nines, cool, cool. Yeah, so I'm trying not to watch it because I'm confusing myself with what I'm talking about, and I end up talking about the hand that was three minutes ago. It's very, very odd. <laughs> Actually, you know what's funny is I can hear you on that, but I can't hear you hardly at the table. I have to really concentrate. Yeah, yeah. Very, very strange. Very strange. Player check. Yeah. Player check. Set. Here's the turn. Am I am I complaining about Mike enough? I feel he's I feel he's bothering me this evening. Oh my god. I can't believe what you're saying about that. Unbelievable. Me. Literally unbelievable. You, you might be able to get I'm actually to watching it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't bring up the screen because the, the OVR toolkit won't work, so I'm yeah. just looking at my, my, my virtual desktop. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like, I like your comments about I'm playing wide. <laughs> <laughs> so accurate, too. Uh. Yeah, honestly, talking about poker is the best. You can talk for days and days and days about how to play just one particular hand or one particular spot, and there's always more to think about. I hit a set on the river. Oh, wow, cool. 
It felt like a set. Nice. Yeah, I was lucky because I know he had me up till then. Oh. I do, I do like, I do appreciate what you're talking about. Bold. Big stacks. Playing with the big stacks. That you can Bold. risk playing shittier hands for the potential of winning the $50 million oh. pot. Bold. Exactly. It's making sure you don't Bold. go the other way and lose the fifty million dollar pot because oh, of it. Yeah. That, that's which is what happened with you with the second best hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check. Absolutely. Bet. Player fold. Call. The turn. I've got no idea how long we've been doing this for. Oh, two hours, that's not bad. I can really talk. Not a best of watch. So, if you've been with me since the start of this, thank you very much. Because uh, I appreciate it. Um, so I've got a YouTube channel. I'm going to post the link in uh, general. Actually, I'll post the link in the chat, or if someone happens to get there first, um, I'll post this up there. And uh, you never know, I might turn a few of these into videos. I haven't done any videos for a while. Might be nice. Um, but as you can see, this this has been one of those frustrating nights where you don't get a big hand, and the temptation is to push it. Um, the best player in the world will not win all the time, not even close to it. If you win 60% of the time and lose 40% of the time, you are doing fantastic and you'll make a fortune. People try and win every session. They're obsessed with checking this. Yeah. How far down am I? How far is the map? The map. There's only one figure that matters, and it's the one on the, the overall, how many chips you've won over a very, very long period of time. Weeks and even months don't really matter. So... A session like this where I've played lots of hands, I haven't really won any big pots. Have I played well is all I'm thinking about. So at the moment, unless I do anything wrong from now on, I'll sleep well tonight. I lost with the second nut flush to a backdoor flush to Mike. Fine, he can be bluffing there. He can have the second best hand there. That's okay. Other than that, everything else has been pretty standard. Right. There should be a straight or a set here or the nut flush draw and nothing else. Oh. Got out of jail there. Wow. I just already really dropped. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Never me. give up on this favorite on this game. Yeah. I didn't. Hand, man. I was jabbering yeah, away. Yeah. So I didn't seal the action. You probably did. But I'm assuming that Wasteman raised pre flop, and I'm assuming there was a flap. That is an absolutely horrific. Yeah, that's, a, a that's as bad a flop as you can get with Kings. King. Because. There's not many hands that are calling you down on a re-raise on the flop that you beat. There's a whole bunch of two pairs, a whole bunch of sets. There's a few flush draws, but there's a lot of combo draws where someone's got a pair and a flush draw. Um, so if you looked at all the possible hands that are calling you on the flop there, you're beating very few of them. So with a hand like Kings, you should slow it right down, check the flop, um, bet the turn if they don't show any signs of responding or even just turn your kings into a bluff catcher to the river but again big big nice pair like kings under cards fantastic sometimes actually it's a trap and again those are the flops where or the hands where people lose a huge amount of money and say well i couldn't get away from that now, waste man um, did have the king of diamonds which is a great card to have there it's a blocker to some of the flush draws and obviously as in that case it's an out um but on low flops, low connected flops, when you get aces, kings, and queens, slow the fuck down, because you will stack yourself more often than not. And when you win a pot, you'll win a small one. Um, yeah, no, if you're thinking about position, whether the table's six max or eight max fancy, you're, you're, you're absolutely on the right lines. Um... Yeah, and it's the small, it's the subtle things that make a difference. King nine suited on the button, great hand, playable hand, not a great hand. King nine suited early position, fold it. He moves it over there. 
Uh, sorry for criticising your King's play there, Wasteman. I didn't really see the whole of the hand. But, um, yeah. Same time, I can't blame you for getting it all in there. Saying I've not really touched, do I know? Nice. Uh, I don't know how they got there with 10 7 and 10 6, so we'll draw a veil over that. But I suspect it's either a limp or a small raise from Diva, followed by a flat from Mike, and then the hand played itself out from there. They both knew the other one didn't have a flush, so. Um, yeah, one thing I'm really touched on is flop textures. So, there's a whole. A flop can be wet or a flop can be dry. A dry flop doesn't have many. Um, straight draws on it, doesn't have many flush draws on it. The driest flop you can get is King 7-2 Rainbow, so different suits. A wet flop is one with loads of draws and um, uh, connecting cards. So uh, 6, 7, 8 are diamonds, or 3, 5, 7, uh, 2 clubs on it. Um, you want to approach flops completely differently based on their texture and how wet they are. You also want to approach flops differently based on how many high or low cards there are. So flops with high cards favour the preflop razor. Flops with low cards favour the preflop cooler. I think Waste Manager's heard me say something about it. Um, so if you're the preflop razor and there's an ace and two low cards or an ace and a pair or king, queen, seven, you can bet those flops because it suits your range. If the flop comes out three, four, five, and you're the preflop raiser, it suits the um, preflop caller, and it particularly suits the big blind and the small blind if they're in the hand. So based on that, you decide how often you want to bet the pot and how much to bet the pot. Generally speaking, the wetter the board, the bigger the bet. So on dry flops, you bet smaller. On wet flops, you bet larger. Because on dry flops, there's fewer hands that are going to call you and you need hands to call you that you're ahead of. And if you bet big, the only hands that will call you are the ones that are beating Bold. you, which in the case of dry boards is just the sets. Bold. There's a lot of other factors Bold. in there as well, but that's the gist of it. Well, apparently we're up to 13 viewers, which is a, a high, so thank you whoever's... Uh, doing publicity for me. Appreciate that. Diva, min-raised. Now, I'm not a huge fan of min-raising, but I do understand it. And Diva's not playing particularly deep, and by only min-raising, it means the pot's not going to get huge. It also means she can call a three bet without committing to going all in. Waste man's min-raised to min-raise. It was bad play. I just got lucky on that one. <laughs> it wasn't terrible. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't terrible. I was, I was really going to tell on that, but it wasn't terrible. I know exactly what it was. So we flopped top pair there. Yeah, I'm out of position. I've got king seven. I've called because I've got about six to one pre-flop. All of the things I've said about um, deep stack poker apply. I've hit a king. Uh, Still not even remotely interested in that. I could have played slower and went for the royal, but hey, yeah. But the mint, the, uh, the what's interesting there? So Diva's bet one hundred thousand. Waste man's min raised two hundred thousand. At that point, it's only a hundred thousand for Diva to call. She's calling with every pair. You said, the same rule kind of applies. Three or four times the bet plus one for every person who's coming along. So 400, 500,000 with the queens there builds a bigger pot pre flop. Shakes off the idiots like me who are going to call with kings. I can three bet fives there, but there's too many people in the pot. And I am in the small blind. I really aren't get, I'm getting any cards here tonight. I should start moaning. Apparently that works. But you can see that it doesn't matter. What, if you're thinking about every hand, you're working it all through. You're having this conversation with yourself constantly. You're engaged in the hands that you're not playing. It doesn't really matter whether you're actually winning or not because you're, you're playing well. So your brain's trained to be ready when these spots arise. Um, 
I'm obviously focusing a lot harder because I'm trying to explain it out loud, which is a whole different set of brain muscles. Um, normally, I'm half watching the telly, but I'm certainly paying attention to every hand. I mean, or not. Now, 400,000 into a 2.6 million pot is not a bluff. Or if it is a bluff, it's getting called by hands that beat it a lot. It also gives your opponent the opportunity to rebluff you. Although rebluffs are as rare as hens' teeth in this game, which is when the bluffer gets bluffed. I'd love to see them both have nothing here. All right, Queen 9. He's never folding there. I think. Oh, I don't know what. To do. I think Zero Cool thought he was bluffing and came back over the top very light there. That was interesting. So, not a fan of the very small bet on the river. Go for value. Um, right. But Ace 3 here, off suit. Now, this is a lovely opportunity to squeeze. So I'm not betting here for value, I'm betting here as a bluff. I'm going to fold to a 4-bet. And there is the 4-bet. So I've timed this appallingly. But what I've tried to do is I've tried to steal the limp from Waste Man and 500,000 from Cupid and Dizzle combined. So if that bluff gets through uh, about 60%, oh. try and work it out. It's 1.5 million pot, I've put a million in there. It doesn't need to get through that often. For that to be a profitable bet. As it is, I'm folding here every single time. Because this chap's not shoved before. He's feigning disinterest. I'm going to show him an ace to see if I can get. I think he's got ace, king, ace, queen. That was impressive. Uh, queen, so there we go. So his shoving range there is um, ace king, uh, aces, kings, queens, obviously, possibly jacks. I think I'm on the flop for sure. I didn't want you to call. Did you hear that? He didn't want me to call. You did want me to call. My range is smashed out of the water by yours. You absolutely want me to call. I wonder if I've got an ace or not. So he's lost value there because if he three bits small, he'll get calls from a larger portion of my range. Not ace three, that was a bluff, as I say. Um, so. <laughs> Thank you. It feels like I'm talking to myself. It's brilliant. I'm just muttering away to myself. It's fantastic. It is a very uh, good learning experience for me because, you know, to get. Like the min raises, yeah. I knew. I thought. See, what's going through my head is I don't think I want to. Uh, Raise it too much because I do want some action. You just get cold, you know. But, you know, so it's good. Kind of I mean, yeah, which is what happened to me when I bet my kings. Like, great when I pre flop rate, everybody folds. Like, Excellent, like good. Bet. You win the pot. You, you, yeah, yeah. You yeah. kind of gauge it by the table, but then sometimes once the one person bet. calls, it's a one person call. So. I know. There's a, there definitely is like a herd mentality fold. around the calling yeah. or folding. Fold. I mean, like if everybody folds and that last guy looks at it, he almost always folds. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Odd odds, I, mean, I don't know if people actually see those odd odds, but... Yeah, although I feel like that doesn't explain all of it. I feel like there's a no, little bit of psychology. Okay. All right, keep calling. I'm calling. So, Mike, I think probably he, he, Mike's either got absolutely fuck all here. We haven't, we know he hasn't got the king of spades, or he's got um, two oh. pair, ace ten, ace jack, ace queen. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realise my mic was open. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Please don't fuck all. Oh, you got the straight. <laughs> nice. I was trying to get. I was trying. Do you have some kind of interface with player notes on it? What is that? <laughs> oh well. Twitch. That was fantastic to listen to you. Say. <laughs> 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 you I've been checking you. every time. I've been so conscious to not say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the that's the Twitch notes. It's unfortunate because I was kind of hoping. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Call the extra eight hundred. I don't have anything there. I didn't want to take the chance of a flash, but at the same time. Uh, no, I'm yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. No. I'd, I had uh, King, King Jack with the King of Spades. So. 
it's just a continuation bit. Um, Wait, his, so that's part of his, he has player notes on his Twitch oh. channel? No, no, oh, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's no, no, what I'm saying. That's the Twitch chat. That's the Twitch chat coming through. Oh, that's the chat? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's the chat. Return. Player chat. 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 Sitting there reading the notes about Zero Cool, and I'm like, cracking up. Oh, you can read notes? Oh, I didn't. There's no notes. I haven't got any. I used to have notes years ago when I first started this game, but I haven't got notes anymore. Yeah, so what Diva and um, Waste Man are talking about there is when you get a big hand, like you you sit for hours waiting for a hand. Angry tilt face. <laughs> you sit for hours waiting for a big hand, but aces. Three people limp, and you think, well, if I raise it to 300,000 or five times the bet, they're all going to fold. So I'll, I'll go lower so they call. What you're really saying is that I'm going to let them call with a lot of hands. What, you, what you're really saying is that I'm not going to define their range any further than any two cards. What? So That's crazy. Is my mic like turned down? Because you can barely hear me in your video or in your stream. On you. I've got the um, in-game mic turned down lower so I can talk over it. So yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've turned it down a bit more than normal. So. Um, yeah, and what you really want to do is when you've got aces, you want to know where you stand. So I don't mean bet massive to make people fold the whole, I don't want people calling nonsense. But you want to bet, again, four, three or four times the bet plus one for every other person in the pot, already in the pot. Um, then if they call, they're, both, they're either making a mistake by calling with garbage or they're telling you that they've got a reasonable hand to hand good enough to call. And you're in position, and you're the aggressor. So Diva raises to a hundred thousand. She's saying, "I've got you know, any pair. I've got a couple of big cards. I've got some decent suited connectors." Oh. And Wasteman min raises, giving her the opportunity oh. to call with every single one of those because she's not folding a single hand. At that point, whatever comes on the flop, That's with your fun. kings, your queens, your aces, you don't know where you stand. So you've got to make that second bet in the dark. Also, if you have got a big hand, you oh. want a bigger pot. Get him so as he just comes through, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Mike's got fuck all here, right. as he's got the straight. <laughs> Either he's got fuck all, or he's got two pair, he doesn't have a king. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh. Here's the plot. Leave it to me to go in with three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's why I keep checking my mic here. Just go, I've been well aware of the fact that I'm going to uh, start telling people. Yeah, I, I, I played a lot of live Cash Hunter, and I think um, this plays a lot like a bad 1 2 game in a casino. This is no, no knocking this, this is play money. Um, but there's plenty of live cash games with big chunks of money on the table I've played, which play a lot like this. Lots of limping, lots of min raising, um, very little bluffing. When the bluffing does happen, it's absolutely massive. Um, yeah, so this, this has got a lot in common, I think, with uh, live poker. A lot more common with live poker than with uh, online cash games. Right. Pocket sixes, Mike is betting all his draws, he's betting ace five, he's betting queen ten, he's betting a few weaker jacks, he's certainly not betting, I don't I mean, maybe he bet his two oh. pairs there, um, but there's enough draws in Mike's range that I can uh, call with the pocket sixes. Um, good that I've got the six of clubs, that's one less club for the flush to hit, unfortunately that's it. Right now this is a fun game, either he's betting the flush in which case he's hit it, or he's not betting the flush in which case he's going to fold if I bet representing the flush or the king or the jack. So we're going to find out where we stand and we're going to bet a reasonable size. So we're going to pop a million in there. So we're representing the flush. We've got a back door to the six of clubs if he does happen to have a set. If he's got two pair. If he's got ace nine, he's in a very awkward spot. If he's got jack ten, jack queen, he's in an awkward spot. And he folds. So, um, yeah, so I had you. Yeah. Queen Jack. 
Yeah, one of yeah, yeah, one of the like. But yeah, presu presumably not the queen of clubs. I ended up with, I ended up with a flush draw, huh. but I wasn't gonna go for yeah. runner runner. So you see now, because I raised that preflop with the sixes, that bought um, kings, jacks, uh, ace, queen of clubs. That made that flop suit my range so well that my my line of bet bet was a uh, call then bet was convincing when the king hit because I've got so many kings in my range um, and I've got so many flushes in my range and better sets um, that might can fold. Now uh, this is a good spot. So king six, I've got two pair. A lot of people lead out there, but they think, crikey, I've got two pair. Someone could hit a flush on the turn. I better bet. Well, at that point, you allow everyone to fold their draws. You allow everyone to fold um, four or five. You allow the weaker kings. No, not the weaker kings. They're always calling. A6 gets to fold. This way, I'm underrepresenting the strength of my hand significantly. I should get called down by all the kings. Um, even uh, diamond draws with queens in them should call the river. So we're going to make a nice large bet. And hopefully we get called by something that's not even close. Okay, Pete can actually have me beat here with King Queen. And he can be bluffing. Oh, that's a pain. Now he knows that I've got what flushes. I'm literally losing to a set here. He got eight. I'm going to call this because he can have 8 6 in his range. Um, he can have queen, king three. So there's a lot of two pairs on B. I'm losing the king queen. I'm losing the pocket eights. Oh, and sets, obviously. <laughs> nice answer. Yeah. That's quite a wordy, wordy spiel from Cupid there. So, yeah, it's just unfortunate. But again, by not leading the flop, um, Pot was probably a little bit smaller than it would have been otherwise. So just one of those things. I can fold there or I can call. But if I fold, that means I'm only calling with King if you lined up all the hands in a row there on that river. The next one up from King Six was King Queen. So that the the rank of hands on that board was King oh, six uh, six three eight six eight three six eight king up six, which I had king eight was better than king six um king queen uh king eight queen eight um so with the king i'm uh, with king six i'm doing pretty well there against all the possible hands that kp can have apart from the sets um so yeah i think that's probably okay calling that i think he bets enough with the mistrust draws as well that that's okay Interesting. Uh, that that hand there, that's the kind of hand I'd like to go back and look at again. Those are the ones that are interesting. Because it's not a bad beat, it's um an interesting spot. I just can't fucking beat you, man. Like he's on fire this evening. How much down are we at this up actually? Ten was the only card that beat me. So nine you reach for the chips, I thought for sure you had the straight. I thought maybe an ace three, something like that, but yeah, fucking. You made it cheap enough for me to keep going for the 500k for sure. Yeah. So we're 40 million down today. Uh, which well, is. Up with 500k and fold. maybe you just haul it like you did. Fold. If I would have checked, you would have raised it. Player, fold. That's always the fold. challenge with me because if nobody is going to raise it, I'm going to try check. to buy it. And if I don't win it and I have two Player, solid check. cards. Then I'm still in a good position, Player right? Fold. That's right. exactly what happened there. Bet. Call. Fold. The turn. Bet. Yeah, Mike's playing well this evening, Call. getting some good cards and profiting from them, which is always the way. I'll, 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 Bet. I'll keep it woken up. The five shouldn't make any difference unless he's got a set of fives, but then he bet more with that. Yeah, those are the hands I like to think about afterwards. Were there enough hands that Cupid could have hit there that I beat with my two pair? And if I'm not calling with that hand, what hands am I calling with is the way I like to think about that. And I know Cupid can bluff. I know he can um, 
I think a lot of misdraws. I know that I've underrepresented the strength of my hand, therefore he's more likely to bluff. So on balance, I think I have to call there and just hate it, knowing that I'm going to lose a big chunk of the time. Um, I think the call, I think probably only have to be good about 40% of the time there, and I think I probably am, maybe even slightly less. Jack 10 off in late position, couple of limpers, my literally my favourite kind of spot. All sorts of opportunities, whatever the flop is. Mike limp folds, which is unusual. And that's a great flop for us. We've got an ace on the board, which hits my range hard, and we've got an open-ended straight draw. So it's a wet board, but we want callers with the nine. We want callers with the flush draws. We've got the ten of hearts as well, which is nice. Um, nine seven just got there. A seven. We're definitely going to bet again. That much is certain. So I'm really representing all the aces. I'm representing all the sets. I'm representing. I guess I'm representing a few draws. So, nice and aggressively there with the open end. If I hit on the river, whether it's a heart or not, or if it's a heart, I'll slow down. I'll just check. I'll just call, probably. Unless it's a huge bet. But I can bet any river where they check to me that I don't hit. And if I do hit, I've nicely disguised my draw, and I can get a nice big pop, assuming they've got something. Um, but a vast amount of the hands that I win play out exactly like that one. Limp, 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 limp. Raise. Bet, bet, fold, fold. Oh. And providing you do the same when you've got ace queen, you make a fortune. And really importantly, obviously people will see this on the stream, but I don't show people those. As far as everyone's concerned, I had ace queen there or ace king or a set. Because I do exactly the same with those hands. Those are the hands I like to think about afterwards. Bet. Were there enough hands that Cupid could have there that I beat with my two pair? And if I'm not calling with that hand, what hands am I calling with is the way I like to think about that. And I know Cupid can bluff. I know he can um, bluff with a lot of misdraws. I know that I've underrepresented the strength of my hand. Three of a kind. Nice point. Do you want to swap seats? You've, you've got the hot seat. I, I booked the hot seat for this evening for my stream, and you've, you've stolen it from me. The problem is I get shit kickers, so it kind of slows down the betting. I would have raised stupid there, but I didn't have anything to go for. I didn't know Fold. if he had, like, a set of tens or something. Fold. Call. Call. Mike limp folds, which Call. is unusual. Check. We've got an ace on the board, which... It hits my range hard, Set. and we've got an open ended straight draw. So it's a wet board, but we want callers with the nine, we want callers with the flush draws. Player bet. Hot size Set bet from Diva, well, which is nice. Ball. Sorry. Um. <laughs> that was just, that was matter of fact, that was, there wasn't any, 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 any notes to that. Nice, nice. Flush draw with a pair, everyone's favourite. Yeah. Oh, I dropped the... I should say I'm streaming Dropler and I'm kind of commentating on how people, what I'm playing and how, how I'm playing. You? Yeah, yeah, just say you where you Yeah, You can swear and you can whatever, that's fine. And he's making commentary about the plays that are going on. And it's <laughs> Some of them are pretty Fold. funny. Particularly oh, funny no. when I forget to turn the mic off and I go, Mike's full of shit here. I mean, that was that was the highlight thus far. <laughs> and in actuality, right I, have, I have the nuts already. <laughs> Just hilarious. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so. 
I'll be back in two minutes. I've got to just take a quick break. Back in a second, guys. I love that he was like frozen with an angry face. Or was that just because the hand ended? Right on. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was terribly rude. Bold. Set. The fly. No worries. Dead. I forgot to sit out there. Cardinal sitting in uh, VR poker. When you leave the table, not sitting out. Anyway. So, where are we? So if you're watching this and you thought it was useful, let me know because um, I can always do more of this. Um, yeah, and I'll happily post it on YouTube as well once I've downloaded. And if anyone is watching who has yet to see uh, the my other YouTube channel, uh, Stick in YouTube, Relaxing Grab, for all of your uh, aquarium based comedy slash fish reality show entertainment needs. That's Relaxing Grab. Well, last time Dizzle bet a quarter of the pot on the river, he had uh, two pair. So, is that something he does habitually? And then he got raised last time as well. Now, the check raise on the river should be, at the very minimum, Jack Queen, but it's more than likely the flush. Which would have backdoored. I didn't seal the action into there. But this guy, if some someone who shoves Queen's pre-flop to because they don't want to get called is not someone who check raises the river with a the bluff there. Oh. And there we are, the stone cold nuts. Um, whereas Dizzle probably had two pair like he did last time. He better caught a pot on the river. And it's those tendencies when people only bet with strong hands and only check with weak hands that make them easy to play against. Whereas someone like Cupid, who can bet with nothing and can check with nothing and can bet with something and check with something, is very hard to play with. And that's called being balanced. 
And what you want to be is somebody where people don't know when you do a certain thing, whether you're at the top of your range or your bottom. And like I say, ideally, you want to be polarised so you're doing the same thing with your best hands and your worst hands, and you could always be bluffing. Um, that's, it's a concept which I'd struggled for years to even get my head around. It's one I find even harder to explain. But ideally, you want a balanced game. If you're into GTO, not to the point quite where it's that, you know, mathematically perfect. But at the very least, you want to always have the possibility of nut nutted hands and bluff hands on every street. Drop Dropper's absolutely motionless here, which often implies weakness, and she's sort of twitching in the direction of Cupid. Cupid's not happy, so he's clearly not... God, that could have been a bluff there. That could have been a strong hand turned into a bluff on the river as a kind of blocker bet because she knows that an eight's the nuts. That was interesting. Right. It is ten past two here in the UK in the morning. So I won't be going for too much longer. to everyone who's watching uh, I'd like to know I'm gonna send a raid over to um, Pretty and Punk's um, stream when I'm finished providing I can work out how to do that Oh, she's playing sit and goes at the moment, so that'd be nice. We'll do that in a second. Turn. Player check. Check. Bet. Call. Fold. Thank you, Fanta. Very kind. Um, Fold. Yeah, I've Call. The done a lot of different content in the past on different platforms um, about poker and other Player things, check. but this is the first time I've tried to do a kind of stream of consciousness and the rate as you're playing thing it's uh, a bit like uh, patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time but i'm quite enjoying it so i shall probably do this again but thank you really appreciate it cheers cupid night mate well played thank you for taking my chips your advice while listening to it Fold. two hands later just so we're clear excellent that's good <laughs> I'm, I'm literally shooting myself in the foot here you realize see i'd love to call this and 
be particulars. I'll be running dry on cards, but I'm not. Um, How's it going? Cash returns. Uh, that's going. Yeah, I thought about buying it, but Fold. I like little and toys. I like the mask problem is you can't see the expression you're making, so it's fun for me yeah. to see what you're asking. Yeah. That's a call. Would you at least have a little icon in your view or so you can show the face you're making? Yeah. Player bet. Up somewhere. Call. Showdown. Two pair. Right, I'm gonna uh Of course it had to get to the point where I got had a straight draw also. Call it a day here. I'm going to send a raid over to Pretty and Punk's channel. I'm sure she'd appreciate your uh, your views. If you're not following me, then please do that. I've got no intention of trying to make any money out of this, so uh, just delighted if people are getting some value out of it. Um, but I would appreciate the follows. Yeah, uh, that would be nice. So I'm going to try and send a raid over to Pretty now. Four viewers, eight viewers are very, very Pretty and Punk. Actually, there were a couple lands I was kind. I threw in 40 million on when I hit the. Take care, guys. Be safe. Um, and remember, stop limping. Fold. Here's my pocket. Here goes a stupid question. Would you happen to remember what that last card was when I did? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I was the going block. to heart. Fold. 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 Fold.